But unfortunately, there was a small crack underneath the door. And oh, it will burn. <laughs> That's, the That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so it started seeping under the door, and everyone was like, okay, time to go. Um, so we proceeded out of the room that had the chest in it and back out into the woods around uh, the liquor. It's a really hard word to say. <laughs> and um, then there was a lot of um, discussion about like finding out what the value of various diamonds were, which I ended up with eight of them, and um, Azimir ended up with two. Um, and then um, <laughs> uh, uh, Azimir put on the belt and started doing a lot of push-ups. <laughs> and... Ant. It was most impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was actually intended though to be a distraction yeah. to <laughs> Edelis as he donned the armor. Of yes, <laughs> yes, yes, because um, Marathol they all. It... Oh my! Let's go, Susan! <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Martha Leal had uh, actually insisted that basically that um, in her very elven way that uh, Eldilis t- take it because it would do him better than it would do her just you to carry it around. Um, and so, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> there were a lot of push-ups and Ant and Pogram, I believe, um, were... Uh, dealing with <laughs> with the sword, and it was someone dared him to hold it as lo- no, it was Edelus dared him to hold it as long as he possibly could, because the sword gives him haste, but it also do- does damage over time as the longer. You he remember what it's called, Ant? It is called Dirk of Imprudent Urgency. Yeah. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> it is the um, Dirk of Imprudent. Urgency. I'm nothing if not imprudent, so it's <laughs> very important. <laughs> and with the blade in hand, he actually ran up a tree and stood up there for a while, holding it, <laughs> trying not to let it go. And eventually he just decides to stop. <laughs> um, and then there was more discussion about the sphere, and it was uh, discovered that it might have something to do with teleportation. So let's pause or there for a second, because I think there was some really interesting dialogue around this same point, where... Um, Alatar, Algrim's father, uh, was addressing Edelis, and he spoke of some things, uh, made a couple of references. What do you have uh, a recollection or written down, Edelis? Um, actually, I, I started looking at where he was calling... Uh, how come a fool again? <laughs> he thought it might be a palantir. I was like, dude, does it look like a palantir? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> you <laughs> um, So that was a reference to you. He called you at one point elf friend. friend yeah. And mm. then he said, yes, you would know. Of course you would know. Somewhat cryptic. Uh, he seemed to be lapsing in and out of consciousness. Um, at times... Uh, you know, he was he was present and lucid, and at other times he seemed delirious and utterly out of his mind. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and I cast another um, lesser restoration on him to try to help his mental situation. You did, right after his own son cast the spell magic on him. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the dispel magic did, in fact, uh, appear to uh, dismiss some sort of minor, minor arcane dwelmer that had been on him. Uh, but then your uh, your restoration definitely seemed to clear his wits. And he seemed a bit less avid. All right, so we're going to resume from there. Um, he talked about traveling north deeper into Mirkwood for what purpose? To try to locate sword. the other part of the sphere <coughs> pair, possibly. All right, so he had mentioned that there were two. Uh, there was a second a paired, and he had said that it was held or kept among the uruk of the Mirkwood uh, that he could sense, uh, which he seemed to be quite distressed about that fact, uh, but felt like there was no choice but for you to go and try to find uh, that stone, that you might travel to, as you said, Rual a moment ago, to get what he kept referring to as the sword and the helm, the sword and the helm, and he referenced something called the Stone of the Hapless. It really doesn't ring a bell for any of you, uh, at least not in character. 
Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to pick up from there. But before we do, a quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, thank you, as always, to Dragon Crafting Guild, whose dice trays uh, grace our table. We have four of them around the table. Uh, the artisanry is incredible. Dragon Crafting Guild, check out those trays. Uh, we have Atris Minis. Some of the miniatures on the table today are from Atris Minis. And while not a sponsor, a shout out to Tyrannify, who creates some of the additional terrain items that I have here on the table today. Fabled 42, Ukador, great stream. I'll be back live with them on the 27th, I think, for Origins of Ukador, that Monday night, playing Easier, uh, or uh, Aiden Easier Swarm. And that's a great stream, so check that out if you can. And thanks to everybody who supports the community. Two Dungeon Masters, um, Brett and Rory, they run a podcast, and they are really doing a lot to rep the community. Uh, really not looking for anything to kind of get of their own. They're just trying to help support the community, and they're great guys. So follow all of those. And any of them that are with us, uh, feel free to put your stuff in the chat during the stream today. Okay. So. That is an impressive train. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> All right. So uh, you're now kind of walking through the, uh, the depths of Mirkwood. And I'll bring it up for the monitor here as well. You know, it's, it's certainly um, not as depressing and dark and dank as it was before you had removed the mouth uh, from his position inside Dol Goldor, and yet it would hardly uh, be right to call Mirkwood a place of cheer. And so as you're moving through the forest, uh, the trees are dark and still twisted, uh, the canopy grows thicker and thicker, um, uh, it seems that Alatar continues to recover his wits uh, as you're uh, moving through the forest, traveling north, there's a scent of uh, moss and even some uh, the, the loam of the earth and the trees and the, the sound of birds, but they move furtively among them. Not, not bright chirping, but cautious travel among the trees. You hear the buzz and sound of crickets and you can smell, again, the, sort of the dankness of the forest as it grows deeper and deeper. Uh, Alatar shambles along. Whoops, I didn't put a mini out for him. Let's get one. Alatar shambles along next to you. He seems to be growing um, increasingly lucid. Um. Hey, not great Yay. RPG with the 500. Thank you very much. So he, uh, he kind of shambles next to you and says, I, son, I I know much of what I said did not make sense. Uh, uh, my mind, it, 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 it clears, but it feels like, like, a, like a puzzle with the pieces removed. There are, there are holes in my memory and my, my power. I, I, I feel that something was done to me in that place. He kind of clutches your arm as you move through the forest. It's, it's quite all right. I, I will think clearly enough to get you a rest. So, as you, um... Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that draws little confidence from anyone in the room. <laughs> um, and, and probably uh, almost uh, divinely punctuated by the sound of hazard backup beeping in the background as some truck is loading something. <laughs> that is a commentary on your judgment, I think. So. <laughs> Uh, either that or refrigerator being delivered here today, one of the two. Uh, so <laughs> you, um, you, you go uh, further into the forest and you see it starts to grow dark. And um, off in the distance, as you're traveling, you, you hear the wind begin to pick up and then you hear the crack of thunder um, as the sun is getting lower in the sky. And you, you, so, the, so the terrain is much like you see here. It's a um, heavy forested uh, area, uh, but Ant sees a, an archway that he leaps on top of, scrabbles uh, to get a good view. And Ant, uh, you can see, so you're right here on top. Whoops, oh no. you can pick that up. And put it in. You're up here on top, you get a clear view. Uh, you feel like beneath this archway is the best protection that you're going to have in the storm as night falls. Nope, that was disappointing. Let's just stay here. Everything else looks horrible. 
Hold your oh. dagger to the sky. I think it'll help you see better I'm from like your position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast light on my blade so okay. that the humans have some extra light. So Irida's blade begins nope. to shine brightly. I'm sorry, no. Arthado's <laughs> blade begins to shine brightly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know it gives enough light, but it, you know the, the sky continues to darken um, as the storm grows closer and closer, and the, it begins to pick up in pace. So, I what do, are you doing? I do believe we should head underneath this formation here to get out of the elements if at all possible. So I'm gonna just truck myself underneath here. <laughs> All right, so Marathalia moves beneath the arch. The rain now begins to fall. I'll stay then? under the edge of the, of the uh, okay. rock, but slightly elevated and keeping a lookout behind us okay. for if anything survived the kill, killing cloud that is on our trail. All right, Ant, where are you going? Uh, I'm just going to stay where I am and keep watch. All right, so Ant stays atop. Uh, your cloak begins to get sodden. Brual? I'll go to the other side. Okay. And... All right, Brual moves to the other side. Uh, Alger? I am going to follow Mark Oil while holding a, a hand over Bob's head to keep him from the rain. You shelter this strange-looking bird uh, from the rain. And Azimir? I'm going to follow him in the guard. Okay. Uh, can you go ahead and move Azimir's uh, piece of management? Rock. No, rock. 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 Uh, so, the rain uh, begins to fall harder and harder. Uh, soon there are rivulets of water flowing uh, through. Uh, your father sidles next to you and he begins to shiver. Do you think it, it's safe for us to have a fire? I don't see why not. But, but yes, um, is there any wood or anything nearby that we could build a fire out of that's so you can see, looking out sort of to the sides, it's, you know, all the wood is already becoming wet. Yes. Uh, but there are several dry branches and <coughs> enough you could gather here beneath this archway that have not yet grown wet. Okay, well, I'll gr grab what's dry and build a fire and use my flint and steel to get it growing. Okay. So, in moments, uh, Marathaliel has a small fire. Uh, its flames lick upward, casting a nice illumination underneath the arch. Uh, the wood crackles and gives a nice sort of cloying smell of burning wood against the dankness of the forest. Water continues to flow. Uh, Ant, are you still staying up here and lightning flashing overhead? The intrepid Ant stands <laughs> <laughs> as the water uh, deluges him. And you settle in now for the evening. Um, Alatar looks over at Edelas and says, Do you, do you remember anything of your former time? I do not know what you speak of. I have been plagued with dreams, and I will say that some of them have seemed unusually convincing. Uh, Perhaps you can shed light on my own thoughts. You are the prophecy. He cuts his eyes back over to Hallgrim and kind of looks around in the darkness almost like he's afraid of being overheard. <laughs> you have me mistaken for someone else. I know this armor is very impressive, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I am the son of a soldier. And, uh, I've failed at everything I've tried in my past. And there's, I think you've mistaken me for someone else. You've, you've failed as, as though perhaps doom or fate follows you. That has always been your way. I, I think your father has been uh, using his magic to uh, invade my dreams recently. I've never known him to be wrong. Yes, and I think he perhaps is, uh, he, his own thoughts are perhaps influencing mine. Uh, these are just dreams. Uh, he kind of nods and he sits back as though he's satisfied and doesn't want to press the issue any further. I do have a question for you, though. 
uh, you are Ishtari. Um, you have other Ishtari that, that helped during the War of the Ring. Given that the, that the mouth is now involved, it would be a great time for us uh, to see you contact them, or perhaps we can get more help. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks and he says, All are gone, save I and my brother. Radagast and Gandalf Radagast? have fled this land. Oh. Why would they, they flee? Through. It was They, they were victorious. They traveled with um, the elves. He nods at her. They have gone west to the Undying Lands. My brother remained that he might seek his villainous end, and I was trapped in his plot. None remain of my kindred, but he, and calling upon him will do us no good. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. Good wizard, um, why did you remain behind? If I do ma made you ask, because I do know that most of the Ishtari were um, asked to join with my people. Um, so I, I understand the um, motivations of your brother based on the things that, well, he's been going after, but for yourself, sir. My brother was not always this way. We journeyed in the East together. He became affected by uh, prophecies of the return of Dago Dagaroth, or the, what he would refer to often as a seat at the right hand. I began to draw suspicious of him. I watched him. I grew fearful of his designs, and then one night he vanished. And as I followed, I saw his designs upon the Palantir and upon the return of Melkor. I remained that I might oppose him, but I was a fool. He already had advanced and had allies beyond my power. And that is how I came to be in the fall of the mouth. Mm. I see. Well, it does complicate things. I'm sorry that that happened to you. That is... It is always disappointing when someone we care about disappoints us. And yet, as I have done so to my son, it often seems our lot in life to disappoint those that are near to us. But I would ask you a question once more. How come you to travel with the four? He's a pushy fellow. He kind of uh, interjected himself into our quest. I don't really remember now that you mention it. Well, um, we found him, actually, um, in a dun dun well, no, it's the ruins of the library. Um, and I saved you from the stone garden, if you remember. Mm. Yes. Is that, is that what happened? Yes, I think it is. And then you thanked me after. Mm. Called me sir. Uh, <laughs> that does sound like me. I'm usually <laughs> polite to other warriors. That was that did not happen. And, <laughs> um, but he has proven himself many times over to help us and to be a good fighter. And he is not entirely orc. Um, Thank you. <laughs> he is only half orc. Um, so. Even though he may look frightening, he is a good fighter and a good ally. He's also quite capable at push-ups. It's quite amazing. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I will have to trust you, but half-orc is like half-murderer or half-pregnant. It, it's still the same. I will how, how can you be half-pregnant? Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> He, he isn't sharp so, with it, but he makes up for it <laughs> with his strength and uh, so far loyalty. <laughs> Um, he he kind of nods and he slumps up against the rock. The rain is now. You're you're staying dry beneath the overhang. 
<laughs> except for ants, <laughs> it's thoroughly sodden. Um, you know, the cold. rivulets of water just continue to flow. Hey, Seekazilla, thank you so much for the advantage for DM. It will be well used today. Thank you so much for that. Oh my. Um, <laughs> it's actually a point of inspiration. I think the advantage could use advantages on like uh, skill checks for us, right? Like you could. Yeah, they could. You can use yeah. yeah. And oh, by the way, also yeah, I should mention this. Uh, quick OOC. We'll come back to our ambiance. Um, I've added a couple of 5e elements to the game. If you've seen any of the other streams, you'll know that. I don't like some of the other things of 5e, but I love advantage and inspiration. I think it's very clever. So where I see great role play, um, or I see you do something that's significant, I can give you advantage. If I give you advantage, or if you do something dumb, I give you... Oh! Hey! Hey! What's up? N-X-T-T-Y-T-V! I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Scott. <laughs> Nick's t t I'm going to be careful how I say that. Uh, TV, thank you so much for the sub. So I like the idea of uh, advantage or disadvantage. That means you roll 2d20. If you have advantage, you get to pick the higher of the two on the d20. If you have disadvantage, you must pick the lower of the two on the d20. If I give you inspiration, uh, then you add a d6 to whatever your d20 roll is. So you roll a 20 and a 6, and if you get a 14 and a 5, then you add a 19. So look out for those opportunities, inspiration and or advantage. Uh, a lot of that will come through role play. So uh, for what's happened so far here tonight, I'm giving uh, inspiration to both Edelis and Marathalio. As, as far as the, uh, the, um, the, the extra D6 to the D20, is there anything that, that's added to the damage roll? No. Okay. Yeah, so it would just be to the actual hit. All right, so is anyone doing anything? Um, well, I'm going to do my normal nightly uh, routine. I will sit down with my <coughs> journal, and I will write uh, what happened with us in the mouth, and I will um, kind of draw the things we saw within the chamber. Um, and then I will begin my uh, meditation and um, prayers, um, and I will um, work on regaining my spells. Um, if anybody uh, needs me to, I can take the second watch this evening. Um, it, I assume some of you may want to rest at some point. And since I don't need sleep... Um, <laughs> you see uh, Azimir volunteers, and then uh, he looks for a, a big boulder, and he grabs and starts doing curls <laughs> with it. Just looking for different things to exercise his newfound strength with the belt. Alright, so Azimir... Uh, walks over, he lifts um, actually this one right here. Mm -hmm. uh, where is Azimir? He is right here. So he walks over, you see he actually lifts this giant piece of slate and starts curling it. Um, I whip out my rain. blade real quick so I can hastily climb down and get on the boulder for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Azimir, so uh, as you're curling, suddenly uh, you hear footsteps in the mud. And you turn, the rain streaking through your eyes, you see Ant leaps up on top of the rock. And so as you're curling, uh, he's getting a ride on top of the rock while you curl. And um, I'm guessing I probably am noticing this while I'm writing in my journal, so I actually start drawing this image of these two. Like, <laughs> in, it, right I start doing like weird stuff. little handstands and stuff, because I have that skill. So yeah, he starts doing acrobatics <laughs> on top of the flat piece of slate. Uh, and yes, every time I think I've seen the oddest scene, uh, there's something odder for the next session. So I walk I. towards them, and um, uh, while you all are playing, I'm going to do a circuit and uh, just check around the area. And as I'm close enough, I tug on his belt just slightly to see if it comes loose. Uh, his belt? His belt, behind him, <laughs> okay. just to see what happens. Go ahead and roll d20. All right. Uh, that's 14. Um... So you feel a yank on your belt, not not too strong, but like a little pull on your belt. It does not come loose, but you feel it. You're kind of stop in mid curl. You see Edelis walking past. Is there a problem? Apparently not. <laughs> Wander off and making a circuit just to kind of see. I look at him while I'm curling him and say, "Dog, I think he likes you." <laughs> All right, so you continue around. Uh, it's in moments your father is snoring uh, beneath the overhang. Be before um, yes. his father falls asleep, I okay. offer him my bedroll. 
All right, so he, he looks up at you, almost dozing off. I, your, your kindness, ancient master dwarf. I have no words, but thank you. And he takes your bedroll and he climbs inside it, crawls up, and he's out in seconds. So a quick OOC, I talk about this a couple times. I love role play like that, I make those notes. That's XP. Go back and I, I'm just looking, I'm ignoring this little charade and just looking around to you know, keep him watch. Okay, um, so both uh, you and Edelis, roll d20 for me please. And inspiration, do I get to choose yeah. when to use it? Yes, you okay. choose when you use it. Uh, two and three. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's great. Yeah. You as you walk around, it's uh, visibility is minimal. You know, it's already it's the Mirkwood, right? It's already pretty dark. Uh, but now the rain, uh, just the occasional flash of lightning gives you a bit of illumination. But uh, anything in terms of uh, traces or tracks are washed away quickly with this heavy rain. You make a circuit around. Um, you see these crags and rocks and twisted looking trees but no signs of any living creatures. I just make my way back to the spot just under and uh, settle in. But I'm, I'm not taking off my armor, and I'm just sitting up and going to lean back against the rocks to go to sleep. Yeah, so even as you sit down, you know, you've already noticed, I mentioned uh, last time how light the armor is, uh, but the comfort of the armor, you've never felt like you could sleep comfortably in full armor, and yet this armor it at times almost feels like you're not wearing anything. You also note um, it hadn't quite caught you while you were out there, but now that you've sat down, you note that no water has gotten inside the armor. You remain dry inside. So I'm memorizing spells, and uh, if I, well, when I complete, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching Brock a little dance to a catchy tune that I heard from a bard recently. <laughs> um, Is it a tree bard? <laughs> roll roll, roll, roll d20, add your animal handling. As you try to teach him some sort of a dance, uh, this strange rock bird um, looks at you for a moment, it appears as though it might bite, and then it just disdainfully turns away. <laughs> um, Success! <laughs> so uh, as you're doing that, um, you're kind of settling down in your armor, you've given your bedroll, you're going through the routines that you reference, you're memorizing spells, you finish your curls. How long do you guys stay out there in the rain, and who's taking watch, if anyone? Uh, I said I would take first. Okay. I think is what I agreed to, so I'll right. take first. I'll also stay up and take watch. Well, then I will start trying to dry up near the fire. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk over to the fire, and uh, soon everyone drifts off to sleep. Um, the rain, you know, slows from a storm to just sort of a gentle patter um, in the forest, and uh, the thunder begins to subside, uh, the strikes of lightning stop, and the rain just continues to fall. Uh, the temperature does drop a bit, but it doesn't get too terribly cold in the forest at night. And um, as your watch goes on, uh, you took first, right, Azamir? All right, so go ahead and roll for me, Azamir, a d20, please. 13. 13. Um, okay. All right. And then, Ant, uh, as you finish drying at the fire um, and you're dozing off, uh, roll d20 for me as well. 12. Okay. And then, um, you each give me your perceptions, please. Twenty-one. Okay. Basically, put everything into like two or three things. 
<laughs> All right. So uh, <laughs> this will be for Ant, uh, and Ant alone. Uh, but I'm not going to, you know, message him. I'm going to make it so everybody can hear. Azimir, you do not hear this on watch. And you hear um, a whisper. And you attune your ears. It's coming from somewhere, perhaps over here in the trees or behind the rock. And you recognize it's someone saying your name. You hear, Ant. Ant. Azimir doesn't appear to have noticed. Oh, yeah, I was still, I was taking first watch also. Oh, you both took first watch? Okay, roll d20 for me, please. Seven. It's, it's, it's cast in just the right sort of whisper that only someone with very, very attuned hearing would, would detect it. And then someone with pointy ears? <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my sweet haste move again and run over here, like on top, and try to look down to see if I can see anybody. But like when I get up here, I'm going to like try to be as quiet as possible. Okay, so you actually unsheathe uh, the knife and... Yeah, just for the sake of being quick to like get sure. there and then put it away. All right, so you pull the dirk of imprudent haste. Um, you're still... <laughs> <laughs> you're using it exactly the way it's meant to be used. <laughs> well done. Um, you're still... You're deep in your meditations, lady. Uh, the two of you go ahead and roll... Uh, all three of you roll d20 for me. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead and roll. <laughs> Something bad is about to happen. Oh, <laughs> Save up that and inspiration. Then, That's a four. All right, and then you go ahead and make a stealth check for me, please. Uh, for a d20. Yeah. And 11, your and my stealth is pretty good also. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> That'll be a 112. <laughs> 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 my stealth is 29. Okay, all right. So uh, <laughs> you do this not just quietly, but so quickly, no one else notices. Um, as you pull out the dagger, suddenly <laughs> you have that familiar sense that you had earlier, the world around you seems to slow. Um, you can actually see the individual raindrops <laughs> falling slowly from the sky. As you stand up, a bit of mud splatters and it seems like it just sort of hesitates as the drop of mud flips off your shoes. You sprint forward almost like you're running between the raindrops. You feel your heartbeat racing. Everything just looks extremely clear. You hit the rock and you scale up quickly. Roll d20. Not a difficult roll here. We're just, yep, teach. You scale up the rock. Um, and when you reach the top, you look down and you see a small figure hiding on the other side of the rock. It's got a dank, wet cloak over it with one flopping sleeve. And the figure looks up at you with eyes that are uh, almost glowing, um, leering at you. Ha! I sprint right back where I went, and I start yelling to wake everyone up. Alright, roll d20 for me again, and this time add... <laughs> Don't you want to hear what he has to uh, say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, like, so, as like, you're, you're like, ha! <laughs> you leap off the rock, you sprint back, um, you take... Uh, two hit points of damage uh, from the speed of your heart rate holding this dagger as you sprint back um, this time no need to roll everybody heard the half as you're running it hits you I'll send you a, a, a quick message not not physically hit you something you he's an epiphany yes It flashes through your mind in recognition. You skid. You see Ant comes running uh, underneath the archway. Um, he's holding the dagger. Do you sheathe the dagger or do you keep holding it? Sheathe it. Okay. As he, you, just, like, you see him with those strange, almost insectile uh, movements so quick. Um, he snaps it in. Even those that were sleeping, uh, you're kind of roused from sleep as Ant comes skidding in. Everybody wake up. Wake up quickly. Wait. Wait. Maybe it's fine. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it's 
Fine. Okay. All right. Hey, and then I'll just start walking on? back uh, I, to. I, I, from I kind of follow him. I'm going to just kind of keep an eye on him to see like where he's going and what's all going right. on. You turn and watch. Um, all right. So let's just go quickly around the room. Um, drink some more of that coffee. Uh, mm. You're following him, right? Uh, and then you. I get out my bow and arrow as he's walking and say, I've got your back. Get ready <laughs> to shoot in that general. Ruah, you're, you're still awake. You're on watch. A curious rogue. And I just keep looking <laughs> the opposite direction of All where right. he's going. So and you kind of go off in the mud. You hear the <clears throat> heavy footsteps of Azimir um, behind you. You go back up on the rock. Um, no, I'm just going to start kind of making my way over casually. Okay. Hey, Lim. I know that's you, man. Your heart Come on. rate, your heart rate is slowed now. Um, you hear him call this out. What did he say? And a name Lem? you've never heard before. Was it Lem? Did yeah. I hear Lem? Uh huh. You heard Lem, but you don't. That means nothing to you. Um, Do I hear? Yeah, roll d twenty for me, and Brawl, since you're awake, roll d twenty. Uh, let's go. This one. Twelve. Okay. Oh, is this the guy oh, that no, I didn't hear anything ever. killed his friend or something? Am, am so, I close enough that I hear him saying... Yeah, roll d20 for oh, me. okay. You, um, you uh, Martha, it's not that you obviously you have the keenest hearing of yes. the group. Uh, you have begun sort of a prayer um, as he's walking away, and you miss hearing what he says. And what was your roll, Edward? 19. Yeah, so you and Brual, you both hear him say the name Lem. And it does... Dirty Lem. That can't be good. So you get around the rock, you look. No one's there. I go back to the group, I say, who's that? He is a former um, acquaintance of Ant's. How do you know? I look. He's spoken of him before oh. with us, but that was before you joined us. Hmm. Like I said, it's a skeleton in his <laughs> closet that we thought we dealt with. You hear only silence. Um, roll d20 for me one more time, please. One. Ten. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you do smell something lingering in the Cloying stench of decaying flesh. <laughs> That's dirty limb, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Do not smell anywhere. Uh, hey guys, let's let's spread out and try to find my now very strange past friend. Why would he be out here, Ant? I don't know, but his eyes were glowing, and it freaked me out, and. <laughs> took me a second to even recognize him, so you might want to watch out. You should have went drinking. So you do. You so you do know. You know, and this was actually a little bit of the after chat from the last session. You now recognize this is the same figure you saw shadowing you on the road from Minas Tirith several days ago before you reached Red River. So clearly, he's been following you. Yeah, he's been mm. acting pretty flaky lately, so he might be a bit unpredictable. So keep your wits about you and your <laughs> weapons about you. <laughs> Nothing bad has ever happened from splitting up the party, so... Um, I'm... She's my... Can I just, like, make a perception check and see if I can spot anything anywhere, like, kind of in the... Around sure, us. so you look over there. Go ahead and roll d20. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this one. Oh, but it was a three. I'm not having a good day of rolling things. Okay. Now you look over. Again, the rain is, is making it difficult to I'm see. To smell them. Visibility since is like, minimal. Since I am smelling like the decaying flesh, I just want to try to locate my scent. All right. So as you kind of walk around, um, you know, again, the rain is just making everything so difficult. You feel like you might have been able to track by scent, but within seconds of even smelling it, the rain has washed away whatever that, that cloying scent was. You were able to smell it, too. Can I try to track it? Track any, like, footsteps? You can. There were some, you did see some footsteps, but they're quickly filling with water and mud. All right, I quickly try to track them. Okay, roll d20. 
And give me your survival skill for that, please. 14. Plus survival. Yeah. Plus three. Um, no. So you you are um, you, you start following, you get about three steps in among the trees, and the rain has already washed away, and it looks like the last step you see, the next thing you see is a rock. So it looks like he stepped up on rock or maybe into trees. You look around, you don't see any other side of this passage. Lem, come on! <laughs> Don't be subconscious about how you smell like death. It's it's not that bad, and it's raining, so it's it's really not that bad. <laughs> you, you call in the forest a bit of mockery. Um, you, there's no response. And when he first came back and said, "Never mind." I went back to sleep. So. Yeah, you're back to sleep. Unless you and you and making too much noise. Edelitz seemed to be the sleeping. least concerned about this. Gruel all kind of looked over, and so you gonna continue to look or walk deeper into the forest or head back to the fire? I'm going back to the fire. I'm getting to sleep. It's definitely okay. not a trap. You should totally look at it. I'll head back to the fire. <laughs> okay. All right. You head back to the fire. Brain. Those brain friends of mine that are playing tricks on me again for fun. I don't know. Well, since my meditation has been broken, I might as well go ahead and take my watch, so um, if anybody else would like to rest, Gruel, if you need to rest, I can take watch by myself for a bit longer. Okay, you take your watch. Um, the rest of the evening passes uneventfully. Uh, the storm slowly subsides, and then the first light of morning uh, begins to fall, Working. and there is only just the sort of soft wind in the background of the forest blowing through the trees as the forest uh, recovers from the storm. Uh, the dawn comes. Everyone starts, begins to awaken. I'm going to head back over to the rock and just see if I can see anything around there. All right, go ahead and move your figure. Do you go up on the rock or around it or? Um, up climb? on it. All right, you climb up and kind of scout deeper into the forest. All right. Make my way up here. All right, you kind of scrabble your way up onto the um, onto the arch of the rock. Um, and let's pull this up so everybody can see. So Edelis up on top of the rock here. Ant has moved to the other side. Um, Azamir, what are you doing? Um, kind of just chilling, hanging okay. out. Azamir relaxes. Gruol, anyone else doing anything else of interest? As the I'm going to consume a ration, one of my rations. All right, if anyone has rations, go ahead and mark those off. If you don't have rations, we're giving them to you. Um, I simplify the dance that I'm trying to teach Rock to a left to right hop, and try and teach him again. Okay, roll the 20 <laughs> again, and it's your hand will handle it. This is gonna pay off someday. <laughs> What's that? Twelve. Oh. Um, this time, he never even looks like he's about to bite you. Um, <laughs> there is a, a bit of you know he kind of looks at you and has a, a, a slight, almost human uh, visage of disdain, <laughs> but doesn't Rock, do anything further. Just further. just hop to the left and then hop to the right. That's all you gotta do. It, it's really easy. Maybe change the track. He Maybe tilts, he, he, you see Rock tilts his head like he's waiting for you to show him. <laughs> I demonstrate. <laughs> of course he so, does. Hop, hop, hop in, in time with the music, hop, hop. The, the bird nods and just kind of looks <laughs> <laughs> away. <laughs> okay, we'll try again I, later. I walk by the mage, <laughs> daft fool. <laughs> I walk over to his father and say, do you require any sustenance this morning? <laughs> if, if you have anything you can spare, I do feel faint. Definitely, I'll give him a day's worth of rations. He takes a, he takes a ration from you, um, and then his head kind of tilts up. And he looks, do you smell that? Funk! 
Edelis, an arrow flies through the forest. I need your armor class, please, sir. Okay. AC is 24. Okay. Let's go around the room quickly. Azimir, armor class. Um, 22. Bit loud. 22, okay, here. Uh, 19. Okay. 13. 13. 22, 19, 13, 24, 25. And, and? 17. All right, Atlas, um, it's a thick black arrow that shoots through the forest. Um, Clearly, the aim was hastily taken. It goes quite wide and sails off into the trees. You hear grunts. I go towards it. As you step like call out to the group, pointing where it's coming from, but I also keep an eye out on other areas you see, and draw my bow. You see thick-looking, heavy orcs start um, appearing from spots in hiding around the trees and the rocks. Um, they are dark green skin. You can make out the one that, that fired at you right there, Edelis. Um, they leap forward, slavering. Initiative. Oh, Lord. And it's the same one the whole time. Yes. We don't so we do anything. one initiative per combat now, not one per round. So we're going to save that initiative for the rest of the round. So the rest of the combat, so it keeps it quick. Let's go around. 18. Okay. Initiative. Eight. Okay. Augur? Uh, 10. Okay. 18. Okay. 7. There. 13. My 18 is better. <laughs> yeah. I had a bonus. Yeah, it was actually a 17 roll. So. They have a. Um, they have an element of surprise. They, they, you know, they caught you unawares. They move quickly and attack. Uh, you have one close on you, Brual. Um, you have, he's not there, sorry. He's there. You have, this one closes, almost gets in range. Uh, this one is able to close on Azimir. This one moves toward Azimir. This one moves forward. It's a mistake on their part. And Ruol, you are attacked. Um, this orc is uh, quite sizable, larger than you're used to seeing, uh, as it swings a heavy blade. Uh, these, are, these are large creatures, right? No, they're 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 still humanoid. They're not quite the large designation, so they're like you know good seven to eight feet tall. But I'm a large creature, so these would be large. Are you considered large? Yeah, I'm considered large. Guys like him are considered medium. And then, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so a blade slips through your armor. Uh, you take 22 points of damage. You feel a cold uh, blade of steel. It pulls it out. <sighs> Slavering, it swings at you again. Uh, the second blow is deflected by your armor. Uh, okay, we go to Azimir first. Um, could I get... Can I like run like right here and then do a whirlwind attack on them? Well, so since he closed first, you'll provoke an attack of opportunity. Okay, right no, I'll, just, I'll just I'll just attack him. All right. I'm gonna do a death or glory on him, which gives me plus four on all my rolls. Okay. For this round. Oh, that's Eighteen plus twenty-eight is forty-six. Yeah, that's a hit. Okay. Eight plus nineteen, twenty-seven, thirty-one. Both hits. All right, sweet. Roll damage. How about two d six? Yes, I have quite a few. All right, thank you. Oh my goodness. Eleven, <laughs> sixteen. Plus 12, 28, 28, 64 points of damage. 64. Woo. Azimir, thunk, thunk, your blade slashes twice, rips giant chunks of flesh 
from the orc's chest. It staggers back, slavering, still alive. Uh, uh, Atlas. Um, after it finally hits, if after okay. all the ones and twos. <laughs> Just trying to get a sense of where I'm at. If I jump right on that orc, um, it, is it is it actually to scale where I'm high enough? I'm probably gonna break something. Um, you know, yeah, it is relatively to scale. You're a good 25 feet up in the air, but if you land on the orc, right. you're likely to break your. I'm ball. going to use inspiration, and I'm going to draw my sword and jump on the orc. Yeah, it's from a bug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's a bird. And I'm going to rely on my new armor to see how it's... Edelus uh, sprints and runs. He leaps down uh, to land on the orc six using his six, inspiration. Oh, uh, well. I'm gonna, can I have all six points, please? Oh, if you <laughs> rolled out there. So is that what you rolled out there? Or? I rolled a six. No, out here. I rolled a one. No, the, oh, you rolled that the first yeah, time? Yeah. All right. And then add your attack bonus. This is be bad. Uh, attack bonus is... Uh, 18. All right, so... Headless <laughs> leaves. Ah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the words you want to hear. Oh, that's you know. <laughs> ah, you know. <laughs> you might be wondering how I found myself here. <laughs> Geometry, read physics. They're very uh, different things than combat. Uh, he, you know, he misjudged like sort of the momentum that he had and the height. No. <laughs> he sails right. Past the orc and thunk falls face first into the mud in front of the other orc. You take you take five points of damage from the fall. Okay, uh, so still alive. All right, let's go to Ant. Okay, I'm way over here. Can I even make it over to this dude with my knife? Oh, so if you pull your knife, yes, you can. You can cover all that distance with the knife. Okay. That's what I'm going to do then. All right. So you pull out again that familiar sensation. You zip past. This, the, the, everything just flies by. Um, you see Ant uh, kind of all of a streak out of the corner of your eye. He does a dead stop. You can roll the hit. Uh, four. Wow. Uh, so you moving, see Ant, though. You're moving pretty fast. <laughs> What's the... Yeah, no, actually, no, that's a good point. So he would be considered flat-footed in this. He'll get no dex bonus. He, he would have no chance to react to the speed of which is happening. So that's 11 with my bonus, I guess. No way. Yeah. You're, you're, no. The, you're at least level... What level are you? You're at least level... Ten. Hey, thank you, Scud. Yeah, so we appreciate plus that. Because you have a base attack bonus. Plus. I might not have updated it lately enough, yeah. but I thought I had, I'm at 7 and 10 speed. plus your dexterity plus whatever the blade gives you. Oh. Right. And I gave you the bonuses on the blade, but I'll give them again. Oh, I got them still. Sorry. Okay. I, I, uh, yep, I didn't it's have plus those. three. Yes. Okay. So I now four plus feel three, three to hit is seven, and then 14. So, so my three. initiative sure. is 21. No, 18. So 18. 18 to hit? Yeah. Okay. You you reach up there, and you get two attacks per round now? Yep. You do, yeah. So your first attack it hits against his armor. He hasn't even seen you yet. You get a second attack. 19. Okay. Uh, uh, you have an expanded crit range on this dagger, so roll again. That's a hit. Now we're going to roll to see if you critical. One. <laughs> you do not critical. Roll damage. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's a six. Plus your strength, plus the dagger. So the dagger's plus three, so that's nine. And then minus my negative one strength, so okay. that's eight. Okay. Uh, and you had done... 64. Yeah, okay. So... Ant sneaks up, hits it in the, in the sort of right in the kidney. You feel your dagger slip in. York falls over dead. I kind of sneer at Ant. <laughs> and I say, you're welcome. <laughs> since, you, since you can't finish, um, I'll, I'll be whoa, your finisher. <laughs> All right, not, that's... not the way Edelis would say it. <laughs> uh, I tell Rock to go out. And attack. All right, Rock lights off your shoulder as he's doing that. I want to ask a quick question for the viewers. Uh, if you can, let us know. Uh, can you hear okay what the players are saying? Is the audio coming from the environment of the battle stuff too loud? I want to make sure that you're able to hear the, uh, the what the players are saying. 
Um, okay, so. But uh, which orcs are visible from where I am? I think that's. Uh, yeah, I mean, just you can sort of assume. You can only see. You could. You can see what's happening out of the corner of your eye here, and you can see what's right in front of you here. So you can't see that one. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I can, you can see, see the rest three of orcs yeah, you here. Yeah, you can see those three orcs. All right. Uh, so I'm going. To, uh, one second. The name of the spell just. Uh, I'm going to cast black tentacles in this area just uh, to try and deny that area from anybody coming under the arch. Okay. And if you need that. No, I think I'm pretty familiar with what it does. I'll look at it again. Whoops. I did something else here. Yeah, I lost it, but I know what it does. Okay. All right, so uh, Halgrim, you cast and suddenly giant sort of thick, almost oily black tentacles start writhing from the ground. Uh, this orc right here and this orc right here, clearly uh, in its radius. He said the environment is pretty much fine, but the stream master overall volume is kind of low. Okay, master overall volume is kind of low. That's good to know. Thank you. Let's go ahead and up that a bit, and let's see if that helps. Um, okay, so um, this orc... Uh, manages to stay free. This one gets caught up in the writhing tentacles, and so we're going to put him on a black die. And what's the radius on that, Hogram? It is uh, 200 feet. Ra uh, ra no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's 200 feet range, uh, 20 foot radius. Okay, yeah, so that's all you capture. You just get these two here. But those, those tentacles should continue to deny yeah, it. Or yeah, yeah, there's the foot radius. So that would be, it would be 20 feet each direction. Right, 20 so feet this way, 20 feet. If he hit it here, he could get both of these. That's easy. He got, to yeah, he got both of these. It, I'm really not. This is more like 30 to feet out. I'm, yeah. I'm doing so it he to got deny both that, of these. Yeah. that entire area. So we okay. don't get flanked from that. Side. Great, thank you, Scott24. Appreciate that audio help. Um, all right, so uh, as you do that, uh, then what are you doing, Bruel? Wait, no, I'm sorry, you are next Is part, it my though. turn? Okay. Um, I am going to move forward just a bit. Um, so I'm right about there. Not okay. quite in range of, melee range of that guy, but just enough to move myself a little closer. Okay. All right, and I'm going to look that particular orc right in the eye, and I'm going to say, in Irvish, I'm going to say, which means you smell like a monster, and I'm going to spit at him. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to cast... Um, Prayer, which is all allies and foes within a 40 foot radius burst centered on me. And that means everybody that is an ally of mine currently is now getting a plus one um, bonus on attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, saves, and skill checks. Wow, while each nice. of our foes takes a minus one penalty on minus all of one. those things. All right, so weapon rolls, skill rolls. Um, and that lasts for 10 rounds. 10 rounds, wow, okay, very so nice. So enjoy your bonuses. So she casts a spell and you see sort of a holy aura surrounds the area. Um, all right, uh, Brual. I'm going to attack the nearest orc to me. 16. That's it. And roll for the second. Yeah, go ahead. Three. Remember to add your plus one bonus. 11. Total? On the second one? Level seems like a bit low, but okay. So one hits. All right. Roll damage. Four. Plus one. Plus seven is eleven. Okay. All right. Um, you slam him with your hammer. Ah! It strikes him in the shoulder. You feel a joint kind of pop, but he's still quite alive and very strong. Um, then you see a little flash of light and a ball of fire blossoms <laughs> here you see a fireball spell irradiates <laughs> right underneath the archway oh, so it hits here it gets um, the back of Brual, the back of Marthaliel 
and then square on Halgrim and his father. Uh, everyone make a saving throw. Reflex DC 23. And you have a plus one to your save, just so you know. And you're fine. You're not You're not in the radius. It's just those four. Azumir's fine. Yes. I'm going to use my inspiration. Okay. Inspiration being used. Nice. 21, unfortunately, not enough. Uh, um, total of 21? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. And then I'm waiting for Halgrim. I'll roll for Alatar. Uh, Alatar, the old man, actually shows remarkable uh, alertness. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, he dives <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> behind the rock. Yeah, he pushes his son into it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly 23? Okay. Um, you, wow. like father, like son, you leap <laughs> the opposite direction. <laughs> and uh, both of you fly. What was yours? 24. 24, nice. all right. So you are in the square of the blast. So I'm going to have... You're going to take full damage, yes. you're going to take half damage, and uh, the two of you are not going to take any damage with the back of it. All right, so... Give me my fireball damage. I, uh, I call out to Rock, locate the source of that spell. The bird, in its most obedient act to this point, just like flies off like it understands what you've asked it to do. Um, it's 41 points of damage, so call it 20 for the halving, and 41 for the full. And we are on to the next round. Um, okay, they attack. So this one uh, attacks you. And let me switch views here because I feel like standing. Does what I did to that orc intimidate this orc at all to where he wants to run? Uh, that's a good question. How, so about, how about what I did? Or what I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to that in just a second. And the little minion, I just, I, uh, I, I, yeah, he might have been more I conjured, I conjured out of my hand. All right, so, um, all right, so let's, let's start with this one first. So through all, he attacks you. It clashes off your armor. The second blow hits. Ooh, and it bites deeply. So, um, a big spear pierces through your armor. No! And always fearful thing when we break out the crit tables. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Oh, not too bad. Um, Sounds right. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to see something spectacular, did you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the blades, it slips, it pierces right underneath uh, sort of the breastplate of your armor. You feel it stick, it goes deep. It, it couldn't have come more than a couple inches from your heart. Um, you take 27 points of damage, Ooh. and blood starts to flow from your chest. Um, the other one, he is tied up in the tentacles, fighting. He can't move. He's stuck. This one tries to close mm, actually hold on here let me see what he would do he's, he's, he's dying he's of laughter he's dying of laughter so <laughs> he's stunned he's, for at least a round he sees the time yeah, I'm, I'm on my face on the ground okay. <laughs> remarkably orcs apparently don't have much of a sense of humor uh, he leaps on you with ferocity okay. uh, as That's does this deserve. one so they oh, both really? attack uh, and listen so you're pulling yourself up out of the mud <laughs> <laughs> just hear it does sheet nicely off of your armor though. it comes uh, clean quite quickly <laughs> as you stand up you suddenly you have two orcs oh, they're battering against you on both sides four blows a hit a miss a miss and a hit so two uh, of their blows uh, an axe and a sword uh, do pierce you you take a total of 37 points of damage from am both able, sides. Am I able to, to make a, a verbal call out in between turns? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Edelis, run towards me. Come under the arch. All right, you hear Halgrim's voice. And yeah, I want you guys to know, like, it's, you've got movement, you've got attacks, and you've got, like, bonus actions. You can do, like, quick things, like saying a command or call you. So you, you can do all that in your round, all right? Um, it's not a trick this time. <laughs> okay. Uh, then uh, we have here Azimir. This one, roll intimidation. Oh yes, sir. He's gone. I'm gonna look at him. I'm gonna say, 
forgot how ugly real orcs were. Did I say that to him? And then... Thank you. Full on ugly. 23. 23. Human scum! He leaps uh, hey, a human. <laughs> <laughs> over, the, <laughs> over the thing and he goes for... No, he's gonna go for you for what you said. He won't even look at it. Minus, uh, minus one on all these rolls. Minus one, I've got that. And I've got your armor class at 22. Yes. Might I possibly have an attack of opportunity? Uh, because it goes the distance? Yeah, so normally but we're doing so that short. with, with uh, disengaging um, or moving through. If he comes right into space, I'm not going to do an attack of opportunity. But if he moves across or leaves... Especially because the, the, the reach. Like, like. Okay, one of his attacks hit you. You feel his spear jab your side. You take 22 points of damage. I uh, I chuckle and I say, that was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. I attack him. Okay, so they had an issue. So those guys are gone. He's gone. He's trapped. He's gone. He's dead. Okay. All right, so now we go to you. All right, I attack. Um, oh, I got a plus one on that. Uh, so, 30. 30, that is, that's a hit. Okay, and then Vital Strike on the second one. That hits as well. Okay. So, how about this 2d6 again? Yes, you made. Right. Azavir oh. lifts his giant black blade. I'm rolling really well. Hews it down. And then, and add plus one to both of those. Oh, yeah. The blade arcs with a strange, almost ghostly fire as he swings it, hews it down on the orc. Uh, 60 points. 60 points of damage between the two blows. You lop off a giant chunk of one of his arms. Ant, you can finish him. <laughs> Teamwork. Uh, okay, uh, Endless. You're now up out of the mud. You have these two orcs battering you on both sides. Yeah. Uh, is there any way? I'm, I'm sure I'll provoke an attack of opportunity if I try to leave where they are. Is there any way for me to get around this one without provoking an act, uh, attack of opportunity since he's yes. stuck? Yes. So, so I'm um, going to try to, as quickly as possible, get my back to this and make my way toward where these people are. And I understand that might provoke something. Right. So the way the way we're going to run this now, if you if you want to use a full round action, the words, and so you don't attack, you're going to use it, you know, what's called a disengage. If you're one-on-one -on -one with an enemy, I'll allow you to disengage, so you basically forego your attack action, and you won't provoke an attack of opportunity. But since there are two of them, one of them will still get an attack of opportunity. This one, however, um, he looks like he's mired in the tentacles. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to give him another save. If he happens to be breaking free, right. you might, but if right. he's still trapped in those tentacles, he will not. So is that what you want to try to do? Um, so if I'm not disengaging, I'm just running... Knowing that that would prevent the attack from both yeah, of them, yeah. but give me an opportunity possibly if I can get as far as I can and also take, uh, yes. would I be able to take an attack yes. at that point? Um, exactly. Now, it, when they attack, do they take both of their swings? No, not with an attack of opportunity. They'll get one swing. Yeah, it's just like as I yeah, run exactly, away. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm disengaging. I'm disengaging. Okay. All right, you disengage. The other one swings. You feel it bounce off your shiny new armor. The blade just kind of clatters against your back, and you move through here. This one tries to... Oh. As it's trying to disentangle itself uh, from the tentacles, you see a tentacle snaps up, grabs it by the arm, and yanks it down to the ground. This one is now completely entangled in the tentacles. You easily move past, and they seem to ignore you. You're now you're now standing sort of right beside Marthaliel. Okay. okay. Uh, Ant, you see all this happen before you. This orc, you see a chunk of its shoulder goes flying past you as Azimir is hewing away at it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack him. Okay. Uh, uh, eight plus it was seven. I looked that up. Uh, so that's 15, uh, 19 with my uh, with my Plus one. So a total of 20, Initiative. that is a miss for your second attack. Alright. Ugh. Uh, it was even worse. Okay, so you're stabbing him, and again, you're still holding the dagger, right? 
Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go uh, ahead and actually, do wait a minute. Was... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Sorry. Uh, this is. I should have told you that you're hasted, so you have double attacks every round. So if you normally get two, you now get four attacks every round. So oh, I yeah. cheated you last time, but it didn't matter since you killed. You're moving with this lightning speed. Now also take two hit points of damage uh, as you're now in your, your second round with the Dirk of Imprudent Haste. And then go ahead and roll your second set of attacks. You just see Ant, this sort of frenetic stabbing <laughs> as he's uh, up by the orb. <laughs> All right, 19. There it is. Roll your second uh, to confirm. 19? Yes. No. Five. Okay, so that's not a crit. It's now roll your second attack. Time to put dice, Joe. 10. Uh, With the seven, 17, seven, 17, 17, 17 21, 21, 21, 21 total. 22. 22. 22. Okay, so one hit. Roll damage. Four. Four plus three, seven minus one plus, plus one. one. So... Yep. <laughs> Stab him. Wow. Oh, wow. God, he already he falls over. He literally him and he dies. <laughs> Kill stealer. Slams <laughs> against the rocks. Yeah. And it's sort and of I, looking quite proud of himself. I'm going to sheath myself immediately. <laughs> sheath my... You sheath my... <laughs> 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 Where exactly? <laughs> oh, I sheath myself. Uh, <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> you do, you... Uh, you sheathe it and, um... <laughs> After taking on an orc, I sheathe myself. <laughs> At extreme speed. Okay, uh, Marthalio. Okay, I am... Oh, no, I'm sorry, no, Hogram, you're next. My bad, I'm sorry. Right. Hogram. Okay. Um... Is that me over there? Yes. Yeah. You pick yourself up, you see your dad is now kind of... He's hiding underneath the refined rocks. I take a moment to assess the situation. I... Point at a spot roughly 20 feet behind Edelis and start casting a spell. And all of a sudden, a giant cloud of green fog, 20 feet high with a 20 feet radius, just appears out of nowhere and starts slowly drifting away from me. In which direction? Toward, uh, away from me, towards the. Is your cloud kill? With so us? Right here and then goes that way. There okay. shouldn't be anybody. 20 feet behind me. Or in front of me, I guess. No, behind me. Oh, from here? No, uh, so you were running towards me, correct? Right, right. right. So, I, whatever. So you cast it behind where he's at? Yes. All right, okay, nice. so okay. it's not going to okay. Yeah, let me see that. It's been a while since I was there. Because I'm like here. right next to you. And yeah. I really don't want to get hit with I'm cool with that. I'm cool in the Yorks. <laughs> Kill them all. I sheathe myself with the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> No, no. Breathe deeply. It will One increase six, your one, no. negative yeah. constitution. Okay, got it. All right. You see this billowing green cloud uh, starts to drift. Uh, these two orcs, um, they move one, uh, moves to, to head this way. This one gives chase to Edelis and runs right into the fog and the tentacles. <laughs> um, all right, Marthalio. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to channel energy um, for a heal to everybody within 30 feet radius of me, so 30 feet on either side of me. Get the heal right now. Marthalio casts a spell of healing. <laughs> it's a six, we keep it. Anything else should we roll? You feel a healing aura uh, fill the area. Uh, this dice tray is not big enough for my healing. <laughs> uh, that's a 10, 11, 16 plus. Whatever that other die went. It's somewhere under the table. Or under your bag. It's in the pit of despair. <laughs> Case of the missing die. All role players have gone through at least one. That is. That is. I got six. <laughs> so. I trust her. That is six. <laughs> six. Eighteen. Whoa. Uh, wow. And four is twenty-two points. Lots of healing. <laughs> healing all around. So um, for anybody in my in my circle there, so sixty feet total right. circle. Brual. <clears throat> all right. Um, Whew, I exciting. am going to 
this one. Smite evil. He's, he's ticked me off. <laughs> <laughs> Brawl calls down the power of his god. You see a, a channel of light flows from the air. Brawl's a hammer suddenly shines. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. Roll your second one. And that's, that's a, a hit. hit. All right, roll your damage. Damage. It's got to be a yeah. Six plus 20, 26. Yeah, and you so double on the first hit. No, that's only against oh, the on dead. Or yeah, you plus, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 26 and uh, 19. Now, are you adding your level to the damage? Yes. On that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, tell me what it looks like. Oh, oh, oh. As I come <laughs> <on. laughs> I raise my war hammer and call on the strength of Auli and bring it down smack in the middle of his chest and just take him to the ground. You just kind of pound him into the ground. Uh, your hammer, you feel it crack through his sternum and you see uh, you know, blood and viscera come up through his throat uh, as he's yes. hammered to the ground. Well done. You see Edelis running yeah. past you. <laughs> They're not so hard to take down. Turn around. <laughs> I'm so weak. And his armor is very shiny, though. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see um, another bolt of fire blossoms towards you. Coming from this same area, you see rock uh, is flying somewhere uh, here. behind here. Boom! It detonates. Uh, so now I need Edelis to make the save, Marthalil to make the save, Ruol to make the save, and Hallgrim to make the save. Yes, and um, <laughs> reflex again. Well, you, 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 you want to get burned by, by uh, you your allies, so. That makes yeah. sense. That's right. Yeah. There's only 23 oh. last time. Why did it go up? Oh, sorry, 23. Yes, okay. Sorry, 23. I was about to say. What? Twenty four last time. It looks well Yeah, and so you took half. Oh, you took half. Gotcha. I gotcha. Twenty one again. Okay. Nineteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty. Sixteen. Okay. Everybody takes full damage. This one (laughs) catches um, as it booms. Um, It's got some of the fumes from Halgrim's cloud. Uh, that are wafting around as well. You hear orcs start coughing. <coughs> uh, everybody takes 44 points of damage in the oh radius. Uh, I'm uh, glad I healed everyone. <laughs> yeah, wow. Boom! Did I get, did it detonates. Um, you should be if you have 30 feet from me. Yeah, you would have been healed by the last one. Okay. I saw where this came from. Uh, yeah, you saw, you saw the fireball streak some, from somewhere over here. Yes. Okay. All right, I have one hit point. Well, he's dead. <laughs> All <laughs> right, next round, Azamir. Um, I do my feet run, and I run at five times my normal speed. So, and no, I no, no, no. What's wrong? get to where I think it is. So, so you can so run at five am... times your normal speed. Yes. Um, is that using like a dash action? So it's like a, oh. you're like a full so speed dash? Yeah. Or Okay, so let's see. The, it's a you feat can... called run, and I run at five times my normal speed. So, so like, play what I'm trying to figure out is, so you have 30-foot normal movement, you can dash at 60. If you yeah. use dash, it's like using your full round action as well, yeah. so you don't get an attack. I'm wondering, could you use a regular move action yeah. so you get 150 feet and still have a full attack, or you well, can do 300-foot sprint? Well, I mean, it just depends on how long it takes me to get to him. Yeah. Right? So. I'm going to say, with that action, you won't... I'll, just I'll say you get one attack. You, okay. If, if you get there, you could get one attack. Okay. Is, is clo- that, sorry, go, go for it. How close to the the target DC would I need to be to take half damage? No, so when you get it, you take half damage. When I get one? Yeah, when you, when you make your save, you take half damage. But I didn't take If you miss first. your save, you take full damage. Because you were partially in cover. You were behind the rocks. Okay. Uh, so you had an advantage. You came forward and cast your spell, so now you were kind of squarely right. in it. So I gave you a cover bonus on the first rolls. So you are you and your father were both already halved, and then another. If you make your save, you take none. Okay. Now you're fully square in it, so you make your save, you take half. Gotcha. Um, all right. And his speed is is he as fast as me with my knife out? I'm just curious. Um, he, what you want to test it? 
Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> do it, do it, do foot it. race. <laughs> Woo. In the heat of battle, a foot so, race breaks out. <laughs> so you see the orc <laughs> takes off, and he's suddenly moving with, like, these giant strides. He leaps over this orc. He darts past this one, provoking an attack of opportunity. I thought that one died. No. No. Oh, it okay, well, I, 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 run, I, I run past him anyways. So. Yeah, yeah, you feel his blade slams against you, doing no damage. You sprint around, and then you see a little <laughs> tiny blur going past you uh, as Ant gets ahead. How close is it, though? It's very, it's very <laughs> totally close. This. It's yeah. very, very close. I'll make sure you don't run into the giant. I'm going Maybe he'll get the attack first this time, and I can finish All right, so let's go to the there. It's always good to run into places you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah, when race good into jet. It, you, one, one might say it's even imprudent. No. Um, <laughs> you might want to avoid that giant green bank of fog. <laughs> so as you come around the corner, Ant, you careening, realizing that you know maybe showing off the prowess Wait, did he unsheathe himself first? Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah, he was <laughs> <laughs> he's fully exposed. Uh, oh. um, and as he comes sprinting around the corner, um, you see several things simultaneously. One, you hear the heavy but quick footsteps of Azimir behind you, squelching in the mud. You come around this rock formation, you see um, an orc, but it's this old, sort of wrinkled-looking orc with a staff and ah. a robe pulled over his head. You see Bob, a rock, pardon me, rock, uh, kind of descending on him with claws, kind of trying to at attack him. Um, as the orc sees you and its eyes go wide, it releases a spell. Oh. And you yes, see so glad you're a little bit faster than me. <laughs> electricity <laughs> flows uh, from its hands, and you see this sort of lightning-looking uh, electric charge <laughs> flow out. Roll d20, reflex save. Oh, it's good to be d big and DC slow. 26. Plus oh. one. Two. Mm. <laughs> Two, all right. Plus Two. one. Plus three. One. Three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> and as you sprint around the corner, you come face to face with this orc. Uh, Wait, what's my reflex wizard. base save? Y yeah, your reflex. Well, it should be is good. Seven. Yeah. So that's a. And 10. then my ability modifier is four, so that's 11, eleven. So and then so seven plus the four is eleven, and then twelve and then fourteen. Not yeah, fourteen. I mean, like it's a good roll, and you could you would be one of the few people that could easily make this save, but you just. Didn't. I just wanted to make sure I at least don't yeah, I hurt you, myself worse no, you than, hurt than yourself by worse. failing to bring up my But you do take a lightning bolt square in the chest as you come around the corner. He <laughs> 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 hits you. You take 51 points of damage. Oh <laughs> as you go sliding, <laughs> you see Ant is thrown back. Like thirty feet in the mud. Oh. That literally killed me. <laughs> like, like, how many do you have? I, I think I have to use this guy here. How many do you have? I have thirty-three. You have yeah. thirty-three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So this dead. this would be the cash again of a minor fate chip, or is it a major? You minor, I think. It's a minor, minor, a minor fate chip. Okay. Oh, All right. I think I have to use this guy. <laughs> I think I have to use this guy. <laughs> yes, it uh, is. Very good yes. quotes this game. We have um, T-shirt ideas all around. As it strikes <laughs> you. Um, you do manage to get your, uh, oh, hey, two DMs. Uh, what level is everybody, real quick? Let's go around level, right. please. Um, 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. You're a 10. You're 10. A 10. 10. Yeah, you're a 10. Everybody, 10th 10. level. Party's 10th level. I don't have everybody level up evenly, by the way. They get different experience points every time, but it's been pretty well role-played throughout the campaign by all the characters, <laughs> so their, their experience point differentials are, are fairly minor. Um, you do manage to pull the dagger up in front of you right as it strikes, and you feel part of the electric charge hits the dagger. So you fly back, you still hit the ground, your damage is cut in half, uh, so you only take 25 points of damage, we'll round right. down. You take 25 points of damage, um, and the, the dagger has like smoke coming off of it now that you're laying Ooh. in the mud. Uh, Azimir, you see all this happen, rock descends and starts scratching uh, after you get one attack. You did see Ant go flying that way. 16, that hits. That's a hit. Can I roll the d6 again? Yes. Take a pick. Alright. Thank you. Hopefully these work. Eh, that one's good. Uh, plus one. Plus one. So 10 plus 28 points of damage. 
Okay. Um, you slam your blade. Tell me what it looks like. Yes. Woo! Um, yes. As I come around the corner in rage that the previous two kills were taken from me from someone <laughs> so small, you see uh, as uh, Ant is blasted this side, he chuckles, and then he brings his uh, blade up and slices up, and it just kind of cleaves his face in half, Ooh. in twain. Okay. You just kind of cleave down, or cleave up, slice his head right in half, um, half his body goes one way, the face flops down the other direction, and Rock just descends and starts, whoops, scratching uh, at his eyes. That was Rock for um, you. <laughs> uh, starts scratching at his eyes. Uh, okay, uh, Edelis. Coughing up blood. <coughs> uh, I... Oh, man. Alright, I just start attacking the one that's fully entangled. Alright, roll to hit. You turn. Um, he is prone. That's a hit. Alright, uh, vital strike. Yes, good call. Uh, what does that do? Uh, one. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, just right. So the first one hits. The second one, the um, your blow, one of the tentacles actually jostles your arm, strikes the ground. It's always Hogram's fault. Plus one. <laughs> it's always Hogram's fault. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen points of damage. Okay. Uh, then we go to Mar. Oh no no, uh, Ant. Um, you're on the ground. Now I let you use your round simultaneously. So that's the end of your round. Uh, Yes, all right. I'm going to channel. You faster though. I will <laughs> channel energy again. Okay. So 30 feet around me. Not as good. 8, 9, 10, 13. Healing energy flows from Marathalio so once again. So add 13 for everyone in that radius. I'm everyone gets 13 you. hit points of healing. I'm in that radius? Yes. Uh, yes. You, uh, wait, how, no, wait, what's the radius? No. 30, 30 feet. He's uh, 30 feet, yeah. Never mind. It would be everybody except. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is a giant green cloud of death. Otherwise, I would have moved closer to you. Uh, I wonder how that got there. <laughs> Wait, does that la- does that last through him going unconscious though? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Once it's really, it's not. Okay. It's, a... it's not a concentration. Well, I thought he was at one hit point. He was unconscious. Oh. Minus two. Yeah, I, I miscalculated. Oh, the first okay. Time. But now he's back. Now you're, you're conscious again. All right, so. Uh, that takes you around then, going conscious and unconscious, Halgrim, and we'll come to Brual. I am going to lay on hands on myself. <clears throat> so that is, let's see, five. Might as well, I've been unsheathing myself. <laughs> you lay your hands on yourself. That's a good one. 12, 17, plus two more. 17, 21. Which one are you attacking? I'm sorry, the one that's prone? That uh, he's, he's, he's laying on hands. Oh, I'm sorry, laying on hands. Laying hands, okay. uh, 21. 21 points of healing, okay. Um, and that is a swift action. You still have an attack. Uh, nice. Then I awesome. will... That's can I, I do it can reach the one on the ground, right? What's that? I can reach the one on the ground. Yes. Uh, I'm going to attack The one that Edelis was just hacking at. Yes. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> After you, good sir. 17... It says 15, oh, 16. 16 points of damage? No, no, no. That was to, to hit. Well, but what about oh, your level two, right? Do you add 10 to that? Yeah, no, roll no, to seven. No, 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 no. That's only on his smite. Oh, so this, treats it, this is treated no, as a second. No, on your to hit, you add your level. Because but is this treated as a second oh, yeah, 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 hit? Yeah, like your basic yeah, 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 yeah. addition. So yeah. that would be like a 20. Right, it, yeah, I, I, maybe, yeah, yeah, I thought so. It's, it, with him prone, it's a hit. Well, your second attack? Nice. That was the That was the second attack. The first one was 30. Okay, okay, okay. Full damage? Uh, two plus seven, nine. I added that in. And three. Yeah, three. Ten. So 19. Total, Total between both? Between both. Between both. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Your hammer slams down twice more on the creature as you smack it. Um, you see, he looks over at you and says, Let me show you how it's done! And he strikes the creature twice. Um, 
Now we go to their round and they turn and start running. Um, this one sprints this way uh, close enough to provoke an attack of opportunity from you, Edelis. Go ahead. This one is trapped. He can do nothing. <coughs> yeah. That's a hit, right? Yeah, it's a hit. Uh, one plus ten. Eleven. Yeah, you slam him in the back. You see a slice, but he leaps over this and keeps running. Um, you quickly finish this one. What's everyone else doing as you see these two sprint away? Um... I'm going to actually go towards Ant because I saw the, him fly backwards. And all right, so pretty bad. All right, so we'll stay kind of in initiative. So you move toward Ant, um, but as you get close, you see you're now in this green cloud, which has oh. actually moved over them. I need both of you to make a con save. Oh man, uh, fortitude save rather. Five. What's your DC? <laughs> Plus on one. Cloud kill? Would, would I have seen that coming and been able to run? Well, no, it was like you kind of actually ran through 10 it. Feet per second. Yeah, it was like you kind of ran through it to get here, but you were moving so fast. <laughs> I didn't hit you with it last round, but you. Can moved. I move so fast again? <laughs> you yeah. only get one of those, right? No, it's just the feet. It's just like. Oh, you can use it once per round. Yeah. So I need to do the save as well for that. Yes. Okay. Well, that's okay. I have pretty high fortitude save. Fortitude? Yes. I think the DC on that's like seven. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just looked that up. Might be. Negative two. Probably. That sounds right. Uh, Saving through for the 18. So it's over 20. Okay. okay, so um, everybody everybody takes a, it's a D4 of con damage, right? So every all of you take four points of constitution damage. He gets to roll the D4 of con damage, not you, Mr. DM. <laughs> Go ahead and roll the D4. I'll let you roll the D4 of con damage. Of course the DM rolls a four. One. Uh, that was a one. I can Four tell. Well, he gets tell. Add plus oh, one. Sound whoa, 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 you just, you just totally moved the cam. You just like, oops. Bang it Sorry. Forward. Yeah. All right, so, so it's three. spin it this way, and yeah, and then let's see, make sure all the other ones are good, close enough. So it's Wait, three. wouldn't that be a one then? And then can you, can you slide it back a bit? No, I think you're it's not an enemy. Just a touch. You're an ally. You get a plus one for your damage. Thank you. Wait, so you get three against the yeah. one. Yeah, because he has Oops, a bunch of ones in Three to con. Nine. Sorry, everybody, hang on a second here. It's like we actually have to. Oh, it's the, the damage to our constitution, not to our yes. health. It's the damage to con. Touch more. Yeah. That's good. And then That's... the focus needs to come just a bit. I just lost 20 hit points. Oh, by the way. Sorry, I thought you'd be smart enough to not run into it. Boom. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, how much was it? Three. Uh, Okay, three points of con damage. So make sure you have any uh, hit point Ouch. adjustments, and the duration on that is? Duration, one minute per level, so ten minutes. Ten minutes, all right, so for some time. Um, those two sprint away. What's everyone I else doing? I sprint after them. Okay, okay you right. turn and run, all right? I go to check on my father. <clears throat> okay, you sprint that way. You move to check on your father, who's dusting himself off, or actually wiping mud off of himself. Ant, uh, you got up, you're choking. <coughs> I'm getting out of the cloud. Okay, are you still unsheathed? <clears throat> I'm gonna, uh, I should probably, I, I don't know if I can really handle much more damage, so I should put it away, but wait, but then I should get out quicker. <laughs> I should probably just get out it? quicker. I'm just gonna get out of the cloud and then sheathe the dagger. All right, you sprint out of the cloud Sheathe it as quickly as you can. You take two hit points of damage. As you sprint out and get clean air. Um, Azimir, you intercept um, in front of those two. Roll d20 for me. Oh, it looks like the bot's working. 18. Okay. Um, as you sprint over there, you see... Many, many, many orcs in the op 
outskirts of the forest. Orcs or orcs like that. Like that. Kind of. Can I catch one? Of yeah, the you, you caught that one. Yeah, you're with him, but okay. Um, but like as you're as you're getting there, you caught up to him. I'm just telling you what you see as you're catching him. You caught him. You're there with him. You can do whatever you want to attack, whatever. You, but you're do noticing this me? from your peripheral. Do they see me? Do, you, uh, do I think they see me? He, it looks like they're facing right towards you. I just stop and I sprint back. <laughs> okay. Like how many did I see? Um, it, it looked like dozens. More than you can see. count, so at least five. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. Oh. You turn and sprint away. <laughs> um, you see Azamir, these two disappear into the forest. You see Azamir comes running back. And uh, he's out of breath as he comes forward. There are many, many, many orcs. Just right that way. Many orcs. Then we should get out of here. You wouldn't guy. know we have two Ishtari with us. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what is that not as God? You hear a voice. Can one roll d20 for me, please? <laughs> Groans. Seven, it's still plus one, everyone. It's still plus one? Okay. Yes. All right. You notice, it, you notice it first, Bruel. You're heady from the battle prowess you've just demonstrated. And um, you smell, yes. Yeah, so you, you all start looking around at Azimir's words, and you see not one, not two, not ten, not twenty, not thirty, not fifty. You see hundreds of orcs start slowly moving from the sides of the forest. Uh, I sprint and I go and well, I check the wizard's body. I recall ball, or rock. I want to get out of the cloud of death. Is it still there? I thought we were moved past. Uh, the cloud is kind of drifting, you know, still further north. So is it north. away from can me, I, though? Can I, can I check the body of the wizard? So you, so you sprinted there, and now you want to sprint back over here? Yeah. You can, but you see orcs now coming. Like, they're coming from all sides, not just over there. I thought they were kind of far. I thought you said they were on the horizon. Kind of. no, These I mean, ones... I meant the tree the line. Yeah, so if I said horizon, I said the wrong thing. I meant, like, you saw them in the tree team. line. No, you see them walking forward from all sides. You see orcs surrounding this area coming forward on all sides. Well, we need to get on top of the rock, I think. I've had enough of that myself. <laughs> um, These orcs seem awfully confident. Everyone, come to me quickly. You feel they're, they're, you can almost feel the feet marching through the forest. Mm. Quickly, I'm, come to me, please. I'm you know, doing what she's saying. What are these guys doing? Are they over there now? We are going towards my Okay. And this is just a dead orc, right? That's the one you smashed to pieces, right? He's dead. 16, I think you said we finished 18. them all. Well, they were running away. Yeah, that's right. Okay. 22 points of healing to everyone with a chan another channel of energy. Once again, Marathalil's healing power flows through the forest. You see, as the orcs continue to move forward, they, they don't seem to be in any hurry. Um, they are everywhere. All these same sort of Swore the dark green. Are there tie. any mages or are they all fighters? As you look around, yes, right you can see there. a scattering. You see some with swords, some with spears, uh, some with long jagged blades, some carrying staves. Um, it is an entire horde. We're entering a cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm. They kind of slow and stop. You just hear the ragged breathing. You hear some of them sniffing. You're soon surrounded. Hello, friend. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Do the, like, like, you arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know these guys. <laughs> uh, your father, he looks over at you. Son, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm not a fine. <laughs> Rock looks at you. Does he do the dance? 
He's <laughs> <laughs> kind of hopped, like, almost like he's mocking you. He just kind of hops back and forth like he's right. chosen to do it on his So, time. Halgrim is Rock's companion. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, you see uh, they part and a large, heavily armored orc uh, steps forward and he utters in a guttural tongue um, who here speaks orc? Me, obviously. <laughs> okay. Actually, no um, languages. You hear him, and yep. I'll allow everyone to hear if you want to translate or whatever. It's fine. You, you hear he, he steps forward and he says, mm. "Why walk you with these mankind elf and dwarf? You are in our forest, and we take." Our pleasure with you. Read your last breaths. Why are you here exactly? <laughs> this is our home, half breed. But can we move it off peacefully? As corpses, yes. <laughs> well, I can tell you, you would lose at least half your army. If you don't let us pass. We may die in the process, but... Roll d20. Hogram, roll d20. It's gonna be a 20. Oh, no. 14. 14? Okay. Uh, pure 14. Pure 14. All right, Hogram. Nat. Uh, 20 divided by 10. <laughs> okay. Um, Four okay. rolls to go. <laughs> you, um, you see several of them start to grab weapons. You hear a uh, buzzing sound coming from some of the mages. Son, maybe. Maybe should show them the orb. It has the speech point. I I claw up the orb and hold it above my head and and well, it's like this it's, big. Yeah. Remember, it's you keep thinking this like a palantir. I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to abuse you of that notion. But it's this big. <laughs> I, I, I hold it above my head and try and look important. Bow before me. <laughs> Bow before me, is that what you say? <laughs> Bow before the orb. Um, a dagger, I mean, a, a, an arrow flies through the air, um, barely missing your hands. Miss me. Um, I say, uh, who do you fight for? Coral is our master. Ku Rao? Have we ever heard of that name? What does the fool hold in his hands? Tell me, tell me what you hold exactly. I forget the exact name. Of it. Uh, orb of Nefarious Transport. That one. Oh, maybe we can use it. The Orb of Orcord Slaying. Can I try to make a bluff check? Yeah. Is that what you want to do? Uh, yes. All right, roll bluff. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I have any skills in this. Oh, I do. Plus nine. All right. Okay. I'm gonna do this at advantage. I got two earlier. So. All right. Seventeen. Now the one was a one. Okay. Plus seventeen plus nine is twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. All right, and tell me what you say exactly again. This, my friend, is the orb of orc horde slaying. It will wipe out maybe half your army, just like that. We can take on the rest by ourselves. The, um, you see, he looks momentarily, you know, kind of a thick green brow knots, and he looks back, back at one of his mages, uh, steps forward and whispers something to him. 
not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Show us what this thing is. Perhaps we find Harley. Do we want? He said he wants to see it, and we can perhaps have Harley. So, if I, if I show it to them, they might talk. Yes. What What do you mean by show? goes like this you see one of his mages steps forward looks wrinkled skin so dark he's almost black um, milky white eyes <coughs> one broken tooth steps forward leans heavily on a crooked I staff. hand it to Azimir I am afraid that they're going to take it from me and I wouldn't be able to stop them at least till what, what, what does it do as if it can called nefarious transport can it transport us so why don't we just do that that's not a bad idea yes oh you mean right now yes <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of in this situation um I, I wave at my father he shuffles over nervously what are you doing we should, we should use this thing he looks at you you see, disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> he says, we should use this thing. <laughs> Son, were you not listening? I expect such reasonings from him. I told you, this is half. You must have both. It is worthless alone. We can't travel half as far? <laughs> How far does a horse with two legs travel? Son? I mean, it can speed. Depends on how motivated he is. <laughs> In a circle. I mean, which two? Which <laughs> <laughs> two? Very bad his hands. Which two? Oh, oh my goodness. Um, can the orcs tell we seem utterly unconcerned with the presence of their army? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, repeat the question. Can, can the orcs tell we seem utterly unconcerned about their presence? Um, yeah, I mean, it's t- they're, they're too busy, like, drooling and sniffing mm. and slavering. It doesn't seem like they're particularly <laughs> impressed with the fact that you're nonplussed by their presence. Mm. Has it been ten minutes yet? No, it's been like three, four mm. minutes. Um, so, I show him the orb, but I don't give it to him. Correct. Correct. We, we don't want to lose it. <laughs> what if he spells me? What if he what? Spells me, like, takes it from me, spell-wise. However I made a potion and cast mage armor on, on Azimir. Okay, we'll okay. feel a divine enchantment on you. Right. You should be good now. Take the orb. But don't give it to him. I, I take off that. <laughs> I, take off that. <laughs> I take the orb and I uh, you begin step forward towards the mage. All right, as you step forward, um, you see now there's actually rank upon rank. You see more of them deeper into the forest. Uh, you get close to the heavy set one in armor in front and this uh, wrinkled, wizened, blackened mage steps forward and kind of looks you hold the orb out and his milky white eyes narrow Uh, he leans over and says something that he whispers into the leader's ear can I try to hear? yep roll me 20 (coughs) you hear um, something about the king, that's all you can hear uh, okay. from this distance. Then uh, the heavy set orc, he he looks a bit surprised. He says, You will come with us or you will die. Where are we going? To see the king. Cool out. Yes, no. He turns. They start moving through the forest. They kind of tighten 
almost like a noose around you, some coming from behind, sort of herding you. He said, we either come with him or we die. <clears throat> I'm going this way because I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I see most of the negotiation? No. Not at all. I mean mm. to add, Nessie, perhaps a dragon may be of use soon. That would be nice, but I have not been very successful with my, with my whispering lately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And oh, see, I did try, but... How are you? So mm. you... Do you follow? Do you try to do anything else? Again, anyone that... I just need to know if anyone's trying to anything other I'm than just following. I'm going to see if I can just... I'm going to cast Comprehend Languages on myself so I can also understand what's being said around us. Okay. Um, I give the orb back to Halgrim. I shuffle next to Ant and uh, quietly say, Ant, uh, perhaps this would be a good time for you to disappear. If you think you'd be able to, I'd like to give this to you for now. Are you going to tell me how to disappear? You're, are you sort of like they're there? Are you now walking with them because they're, they've already kind of caught up at the back? They're kind of ushering you forward. You're you're in are circles. We now with, are, are we separated? No, 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 you're no. all together. You're sort of encircled, and now the circle is, is like moving forward. So you either have to try to. So there's no way he could be sneaky. Well, I'm not saying there's no way, oh. but you're just you are surrounded by orcs, so you can try anything. Do you think you could get away? I don't think so. There's orcs farther than we can even see. Or is there somewhere you could sheathe yourself where no one would notice you? <laughs> is there some place you could hide this where nobody would notice you? As you're being jostled, you can hear. I mean, I'll um, take it. And now you almost wish that you couldn't. Um, the things that are being said are vile, and you hear several of them making a comment about the sweet smell of elf meat and they um, guttural sort of vile things being spoken as they move you forward take my time walking forward <laughs> I, I don't make any sense of urgency I don't like being pushed Okay, so you kind of um, unwillingly, willingly go along. Uh, they move you deeper and deeper into the murkwood. Uh, you hear the footsteps, the stench of orcs all around. Uh, everyone is very uncomfortable, but Marathalia in particular just seems almost like she's about to crawl out of her skin. Um, you do see several of them are kind of eyeing you with a, a mix of interest and hatred. Um, as you go deeper and deeper into the murkwood, you start to see areas where the trees have been hewn away. You see paths. Um, you start to see small wooden structures. And you see orc uh, women with babies on their hips kind of peering out of windows. Clearly, this is they have actually created some sort of a civilization here in the depths of murkwood. Uh, soon, that becomes more and more dense and you actually find yourself in what looks like a, a small city inside the depths of the forest. You can see um, different sorts of nests and um, small structures amidst the trees and on the ground. Uh, still the stench of orcs everywhere but somehow an organized chaos. Um, as they uh, lead you through then it breaks uh, into an open area surrounded uh, by rocks on three sides and you see a, a massive set of armored orcs along uh, the edge of the rocks and there's a throne that's set up atop the rocks and on the throne you see a, a lighter skin green orc uh, that sits up with a bone crown atop his head on the rocks as you're being approached. Do I know who this is? Um, roll d20, add your, um, knowledge, uh, that's 
So. Well, I have no knowledge. It's all the same. And okay. All right. Plus two, so. Fifteen plus two, seventeen. No, you don't recognize who this is, but clearly, you do. Rec you you had heard, and you were, you yourself were seeking, uh, what were termed sort of enlightened orcs, that something had happened after the destruction of the ring. Many of the orcs that had been freed, some descended further into the madness of darkness, but others um, had escaped the chains. They still had the warlike um, and angry countenance of orcs, but they were sentient and civilized and trying to carve out a lead. You'd heard these stories you've been seeking, and you sense that this is exactly what you found. Do I know if this is Kuro? Uh, you could guess that. As we were walking, um, I had my hand on my holy symbol, and I was saying quiet prayers as a, you know, just for hopefully my God will go out over us as we are in this situation. <clears throat> as we're walking, um, I ask Pilgrim's father, um, so who exactly do you think I am? Uh, he's, he looks over at you. Is this the time? Well, we might be dead soon, he and I must around. say I am curious. He says, you are clearly... Now we're going to take a break right there. Uh, so we'll take a quick ten-minute break, and... When we come back, we'll finish up tonight's show. We are going to have a giveaway if we get to 260 followers, and we're getting pretty close. Uh, we had a sub today. Thank you so much, and a follow, and lots of bits today. We really appreciate it. So we're going to break for just a few minutes, and we will be...
It's hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. That is not what happened. <laughs> we just got lost, the, and we're very sorry. The, the child speaks. We just got lost, and we're very sorry. And we would love to get lost again, away from here, <laughs> not bothering you. Then, which is it? Why do you have an elf with you? Because she heals us. <laughs> you try my patience. Think you should be roast upon my fires. We all taste terrible. Upon the hell, we may taste very good. So you are cannibals. I would want it to. Huh? Okay. We'll just splay your innards across the ground and use them for seasoning. Well, technically. <laughs> 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 he just he seems uh, not quite sure what to do with you he looks across the group he, his eyes linger especially on the elf and this something orc uh, that stands with the group and finally he leans forward my maid says you carry something of interest to us And you know, like, his erudition is, it is distinct. He does not sound like an orc. What are you talking about? Suddenly, four orcs start moving forward toward Halgrim. Oh. <laughs> uh, they they kind of surround you, your father. I got stuff in front. Well, they're coming from all sides. You step in front of... Well, all right, so this one's coming, so you kind of step in front of him. Like, kind of, like, nonchalantly, like, just kind of, like... Uh, you see, he stops, he kind of sizes you up and down. <laughs> <laughs> my belt now might bit. be a good time to show off your curling. <laughs> <laughs> he he kind of, like, lift curls at you. The other two that come from the sides, one of them holds out the hand. Demonstrate our traveling entertainment. I, I, I and my father here are <laughs> prestidigitators. Uh, he is our strong man. Um, she, she also does colorful things. Uh, he's an acrobat. You see the same wizened, sort of black uh, skin, crinkled mage with the white eyes. He points at you makes a motion with his finger. The Kural, who stands atop the rock, give the mage the orb that you have. That which you showed. We what will happen to us? Or do we give you the orb? You may find my mercy. I will to give you passage from this place if you surrender the orb. I want a sense motive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Okay, go ahead. Don't Hardcore. be roll really funny. <laughs> a hardcore yeah, sense motive. I, I, do well, have, yeah. I do have a trinket. Will, will I get it back? No. Um, how many... I rolled an 18 and I have 19 on that time. How many uh, troops are in here? So, like, there's, again, stuff that... Uh, this is a... Um, Oh, I got my constitution. That's a 27. Right so it's a 27, and you had a 38, I think? Uh, 18, uh, and I have the 19 so rating thing on there. 30, so oh, 30, I didn't 30, know you just have to add it up, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I thought that somehow weighed into something. So it's it's like you see here. There's, there's sort of rock walls with greenery on all sides. Uh, Kuralo sits atop uh, this one, and then... Uh, you have 
the rest of Mirkwood. So uh, this isn't is over in, here. This isn't like in a in a castle. Or no, 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 no. You're still in the forest. But you're in just sort of like a rock clearing in the middle of the forest. Mm -hmm. The orc horde that that sort of curried you here. They're they're all sort of sound surrounding the area. Mm -hmm. Well, being surrounded by orcs with all of my history, mm -hmm. the whole time she's got her she's like white knuckling her her holy symbol and her jaw is tensed and she's just like. Glaring at everything around her, resisting the urge to do something stupid. <laughs> uh, as he's watching, he the Kura leans forward again. I said, "Give them the orb." And does the dwarf not have a tongue? He speaks nothing. Yeah, that's what should we do? I don't see any way out of here without uh, at least letting them take a look at it. What does your father think? Dad, what do you think? I can get he... it away, but that doesn't get us away. You cannot give it to him. We will never see it again and we will be killed. And by the way, both of you with your sense motive have the same thing. There you have zero trust. Okay. Try to I give it to I give it to, to Rock and tell him to fly away safe, to somewhere safe, and to hide. Good until idea! That's a great idea, because they can't kill us. Good. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> some of us, maybe. <laughs> they can kill all of us, and then go okay. out the bird. All right, so you, as, as you see these other two orcs come forward, and you feel the eyes of the entire horde on you, you take the orb strange writing on it from, not the orb, right, the orb, from the stranger, and you, you put it sort of gently into Rock's claw, and you feel his bone talons close over it, and suddenly he lights off your shoulder and into the air. Uh, I'm going to have you roll initiative for Rock, please. 17. Um, he moves so quickly, streaking into the air, uh, supernatural speed. Still, though, several arrows. Thunk, 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 thunk. You hear orc arrows flying into the air after him. Orc second arrows. I know this from personal experience. Uh, it's like the, um, the OOC, like the Mandalorian, where those two guys are shooting at the can <laughs> off their speeders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, actually, uh, you see several arrows streak into the sky. Rock is moving so quickly. He does a pivot. Two arrows streak past him. One does catch him in the side. You see he kind of does a spiral and moves down, but then still flies and lands inside the forest somewhere. There's an eruption of the orcs. Quiral steps forward. He looms, sorry, he looms on top of the rock. You fool, I will have your head. Two of the orcs seize you by the arms. I, I, if you have his head, you'll never have the orb. He pauses a moment. Orc hordes kind of uh, continue to roil and they grow closer. Um, they're starting to spit, snarl. Uh, you sense the tensions rising and uh, the orcs start to pull you forward, Algrim. They start dragging you. Your father. Son, no! No, son! Thank you. Hey, thank you much for the follow, Pablo 777. And I think that puts us at 258. So two. We lost. Oh, we, that's right. So 257. Three more followers. We have a mini giveaway. And thank you, Pablo 777. Thank you, Scud24, for the continued updates. And yeah, the bird decides to fly off and keep it becoming the new big bad evil guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, they start dragging you forward. They're, you feel that they're sort of. The claws biting into your arms. 
Is there such cowardice that you need an army against a small party as this? Just travelers. So what are you trying to do? I'm trying to see if we can't try to even the numbers a little bit. <clears throat> Alright, so roll d20, add your diplomacy. Skill every paladin needs. <laughs> 14. Total 14? Yeah. I do not wish to make fair odds with my enemies. I wish to slay them and see their women wail and their children grovel at my feet. Ah, well, we don't have any children, <laughs> so you're already going to lose that one. So again, we could just we could just go And we don't away. have women, we just have eight women. I know. They thrust, <laughs> they thrust Holgrim against the rocks. You see one of them pins oh. his neck against the rock, and the other one pulls out a blade. Your father screams, Do something! Do something! I, I run at Kroll. Wait, is he on a rock? Is he on, yeah, like, I, oh, he's on top of it? Yeah, it's a good, like, unless you're Alex Honnold, you know, and you can free solo up that sucker, it's a long way up, yeah. Become the orc whisper. <laughs> I don't see what we can do. Okay, to... one of the orc puts a blade to your throat, Hogram. It's right there. Hogram, it's right. Hogram, it's right there against your throat, and you feel fetid breath, stench hits your nostrils. Again, in this broken common. Bring the bird back. Bring the bird back. I have just placed a death curse on your leader. And unless you let me go right now and let us go on our way, your entire lineage will be cursed for a whole time. <laughs> yes, roll, roll d20 and add your bluff skill. Uh, hey, uh, Paro777, seven, seven, seven. yeah, it, uh, the, the battle is uh, in a real kind of uh, touch and go spot right now. Feel the dagger presses deeper, it breaks skin, blood starts to um, well. I say, hold on. If you kill the wizard, I can guarantee you, you will never see the orb. But if you actually step down from that throne and shake my hand in confirmation that we may pass as your word, then he will bring the bird back. I am not the fool you may be. I will not come down there and shake your hand, half breed. So you're afraid? Oh no, I am not afraid. But you see, Coral, he kind of pivots, he looks, watches as Halgrim's little trickle of blood comes down his throat, sees Marathalia white knuckling her blade. Um looks at the insolent child <laughs> and he says no but you give me an idea I will bring my champion to face you half orc, half breed half man you best my champion and I give you the other you fall to my champion, I take the orb, and I rape your woman, and I kill your comrades. Um, am I gonna stop the blood curse? I just. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, all, you're hearing all. It's common. He's speaking. I common. asked. I don't know, but... I... <laughs> yeah. I feel the glare coming from our it's, I almost can't DM with the glare that's coming from it. It's, it's so powerful. <laughs> um, I kind of close the circle in tight to where they can't hear us. 
You see Azimir steps away from the orc that he was chest to chest with, and he tries to kind of get a bit covert. And there's an orc standing right here, so I can like easily climb up, correct? Okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> you know, with uh, your belt and a dagger of imprudent urgency, you might be able to, uh, with, with a couple of spells in your favor, it might be easy for you. I see no other way at this point. Speak up to. Well, of course, assuming they would be true to their word, you know works better than, better than I. Nothing to trust so far. Um, I speak up. That's gonna and show say, the orb. Yes, I speak up and I say, I will fight your champion. But while the fight is taking place, I will hold the orb in my pouch, and your champion will hold the orb in his pouch. At the end of the battle, I, my comrades, will join me in the middle with the orb that I take off his body, and we dissipate. extraordinary pain coming through the connection. Well, you shot him. He's kind of hurting. I will go get him, and I'll be back. <laughs> the orc's hands tighten on you, clearly not willing to let you go anywhere. We will go. Then you hear a scratching and a scrabbling, and you see Rock with the orb in his beak walking on the ground. He's got an arrow stuck in his side. One wing looks broken as he comes limping back past the orcs. One of the orc reaches down to grab I him. smack him. <laughs> <laughs> I smack him. I just smack him like with my hand. Okay, roll the 20. Uh, yeah, so he's coming right through here. You turn quickly. Eight plus... All right. So you, you, you smack the orc away, and you see the bird is right there, the orb is in its beak. I grab the orb. You snatch the orb, and you see Kural seems unfazed, like he has some sense of honor. He did not want uh, one of his minions to try to stop this. So he says, To all of you agree to the terms that are set by this half breed. I go to Rock and see if I can like fix him up a little bit. Okay, well you walk over, he's got an arrow, we can try to pull the arrow out. Like stuck kind of in that bony rock. I carry him over tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, um Okay, I'll agree on one condition. You let us let me heal our champion and this familiar. One condition. I do not bargain with elves, but I will do this in any case. I do not want any suggestion that my champion was not able to pass the magic strength. You may heal all you wish to, it will do no good. It's a scenario of effect one, or just a heal just for him? I'm doing it the whole group. Okay. They just, they can't tell because it's because it's in the area. Um, 
were so close together it would be kind of covered. So that's um, 22, um, no wait, yeah, 22, um, 24. That's three. Are you good? Yeah, I'm all good. Okay. Thank you. All right, so the healing comes from Marthaliel. You see the wounds are bound um, on Azimir, also rock. You pull the arrow out. Oops. That does not happen to Kural. No, he's fine. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Didn't mean oh. to get you all excited. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks his leg and dies on the new leader. <laughs> um, so the healing is given. Kural leans forward, kind of has his haft of his weapon against his throne and says, Tell me when you are ready for my champion. Oh, oh, see, just double checking. The the dagger does affect you, right? Mm -mm. Or is that the one that doesn't affect It doesn't affect dead. orcs, clerics. Um. So it affected me and affected him and who else? Was it Brule? Yeah, because he's a holy I warrior. Yeah, he just knew I could. No. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Because like anything <laughs> Tricked you! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the two of you could use. Supplements we can give One. to our champion. One, he needs uh, to be given all Potions. the magical uh, benefits that he can. Two, if Ant can uh, participate without somehow being seen. Um, if things get dire, I think that's our fallback. Roar's got. Uh, They're not balls. hearing this, are they? I do, I do have. And uh, presumably, the only reason I'm speaking up at all to be heard is to be heard by the stream, not that yeah. I would be speaking that <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, I think we got a good sneaky right, trick here. Right before he goes to fight the champion, I'm going to touch, because it's it's just a touch thing, um, his weapon, um, to give him the magic weapon plus one bonus. Okay, all right. She blesses your um, blade. I say and it lasts for to him. Ten minutes. I will be ready. Just before before, before you step horizon. away from the group, though, um, the the last thing I would say is if you sense um, you're losing, try to get the pouch and the bolt back yeah. to us. Yeah. He says, "No, there was one condition I have agreed to for the healing. The battle starts now." Okay. So. Okay. Still now has a, uh, you, the you see the orcs, they all start cheering. They're like a frog. A lather. As a man, he can't do it. He's not queer. Oh, okay. Uh, so you, the orcs, they, they start uh, rejoicing, and then you hear heavy footsteps uh, coming through the forest, and orcs start to pass. Um, as these footsteps grow, uh, they rock the forest floor. And yeah, hold on, be fine. Okay. Are there any negative What's that? effects that you can? Oh, letting him know where I lost his weapon. Oh, get the art great. So hang on here. Plus, and plus we did just go through a battle, so a little bit of a fumble, but might be able to get some hallucinations. That's like what? Ten minutes of. Yeah. yeah. You see the orcs part. And something which could hardly, everyone sort of pulls you to the side and leaves Azimir in the middle. Oh my gosh. What? Am I gonna die? I'm gonna die. Every, We're probably every, all gonna die. Every <laughs> character has to have a beginning and an end, right? Um, you see what doesn't even look like it could be considered an orc. Oh. <laughs> this massive creature comes walking in with a maul. It stands almost 12 feet tall. A humongous thews, legs and is arms. Is armor still on me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Um, legs and arms just massive uh, as it steps forward. I don't have the best representation, but it looks something like that. Yeah. And let's let our audience in on what he's seeing. 
okay. He steps forward. He's got uh, armor clad. He's got uh, one pauldron on a shoulder. Greaves this massive mole. Uh, and he sneers at you. I just charge him. <laughs> Initiative. No surprise? <laughs> Thought we were going to nap up or something? Have, uh, have we seen the orb yet? Have we seen the other orb? Nope. We didn't ask to either. <laughs> oh, was that your other condition you were going to ask? Wait. What was the other condition? Yeah, oh, yes, he, said that, he said that the champion would have it in his pouch. Uh, okay. Nine. All right. The creature moves forward. It's huge, mall, but it moves with blinding speed. 26. 26 armor class. The first one is a hit. The second one is a miss. So the first one, boom, it slams down enormous power. You take 27 points of damage. The second blow swings around. You duck out of the way narrowly. You all feel the thunk of the maul as it hits the ground and reverberates through the forest floor. Azamir. All right, I'm going to do... Death or glory. I think. Mm. If anybody wants yeah. to give an advantage here or an inspiration, this would be a good time to do it. He's going to need it. 20! And on confirmation on uh, death or glory, you get plus four on top of confirmation. Plus four on top so of it's plus eight for the confirmation. Okay, all right. 20! Oh! Yeah, are you, are you kidding me? Oh, no way! One in 400 chance in your first roll! Are you freaking kidding me? Well, it's the dice tray! It's the dice tray! It's the crafting guild dice tray! Well done. I was gonna give Azimir advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, roll your percentile. I'm gonna do please. advantage on my percentile dice. Okay. So I'm you gonna roll that. two sets at once. Yep. So. Unbelievable. Night 101. Woo! Are you freaking kidding me? This is my cup. Oh, see this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Taking out the trash. <coughs> Azimir dispatches him with one stroke. <laughs> Alright, it better be it better be good as you tell me what this one shot kill looks like. Woo! <laughs> 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 okay. Oh freaking believable. <laughs> so you see Azimir as he basically just runs to him. And he then like slides in between his legs, but as he's sliding, he just cuts through his middle parts. And then when he gets to the other side, he leaps up and just stabs him in the back of the neck. Or like in the back of the head, it goes through his mouth. So you see exactly as Azimir described, he runs as the second mall fall second mall swing falls, he slides beneath the creature's legs. The black blade that he holds severs it right up through the crotch into the gut. He comes through, leaps up on the other side, and you see, uh, from this side, you see the blade come through its neck and throat, and there is a stunned silence. Get the orb! Get the orb! I get the orb. So, they, like, literally, like, like, the orcs, they all, they're all quiet. There's, like, dead, you can't hear a cricket. Unless one of you is saying uh, I'm saying, I, I, saying I, get the orb. I, just, I, I slowly Your just, get the orb reverberates through the forest because it is dead <laughs> I'm, I'm just moving toward the middle. chuckle under my breath and then like you just see he moves very calmly just looking for the orb and doesn't even mind. Like it was just a normal <clears> thing. Um, you go and you start searching. You All you find, you find the mall, uh, massive. He's got the greaves and the plates I mentioned earlier. Uh, he does have a pouch. Um, when you pull the pouch off of his body, all you find uh, is a sack full of human teeth. I don't find anything else on the body? Mm-mm. Um, well, I, I sever his head off. 
As you're doing this, the orcs kind of start to move restlessly around. And I look at Kural and I say, "There's a, a strain oh, sort of no, there's a <clears throat> like unnerving, like no one knows how to react." I I basically hold his head like this and I say, "If the orb is not in my hands within the next ten seconds, I will do this to half of your army." You look up, you see Quirrell is not standing atop the rock anymore. Uh, I'm actually going to um, move oh. toward Casimir while we're st- while he's talking, and I'm just going to like lay a hand upon an arm, and I'm going to do a cure serious wounds. All right, go ahead. You can do that. And Scud twenty four said, and on that day, the orcs learned that the death curse was no joke. <laughs> 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 Fourteen plus ten is twenty-four. You, you take the healing, and you see Kural now comes walking from behind the rocks. As he steps forward, you can see he is about your size, but looks a bit older. As he he walks forward, you see he looks at that. you. He's he's not even looking at anyone. He looks at you. The blood of our people runs strong. <laughs> we shall be allies. Yes? He lifts up a, an arm. You see an original orc greeting. Yes. He, oh, oh, he, he okay. locks <laughs> arms with you. He drops the orb into your hand. Leave my people now, but no. I know the name of Asunder. He motions at his armies. And they all kind of step away. Your father walks forward. Well done, son. <laughs> <laughs> I give the orbs to Halgrim and I drop them in his hands. I'm glad you know how to finish when it counts. <laughs> <laughs> He learned from you. <laughs> um, you know, Kural stands, and you can just see there's the orcs are kind of starting to mill around. Um, they they have never seen anything like this. Uh, a few of them, you actually it looks like they're kind of moaning over their fallen champion. They drag his body away. Um, they take the severed head. No, you're I still holding it. You're still holding it. Yeah. I've just kind of like walked through, walk around with it. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks around with the severed head. <laughs> All right, you walk around with the severed head. Um, you now have both orbs. You're standing in the midst of this orc tribe. What do you do? Um, maybe we should go now. Yes. I, I thought you knew how to use this. I look at my follower. <laughs> do you? Do you have a tutorial does, on this? Require the, um, <laughs> That's awesome. Require. This epic do, moment, do and then we're just like, so, so do how do you? Fire, <laughs> fire on him. <laughs> he, your father, he looks at you. Are you, are you ready, son? For, yes. Yes. <laughs> he drops his head. Uh, no. Give oh, them to what? No. He asks for the orbs. No. Wait, no, 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 no. wait! <laughs> wait, is that, is We've that? done this. Um, can I sense motive? Oh, oh, oh. Everyone thinks it's Tarkilian. Oh, okay. well, awesome. I'm ready to put yes. a dagger in this dude right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The whole party just. Beat a very imprudent dagger. Um, Alright, so roll, roll d20 uh, on your sense motive. Mm. We. What are we doing? Oh, sense. <gasps> that's a natural 20. A uh, nat 20, okay. Plus 12, that's a 32. Yeah, all right. Um, you, wow, we're rolling the nat 20s today. Uh, once again, in the Dragon Crafting Guild tray. You <laughs> sense um, not only veracity, you sense deeper a knowledge that this is, in his mind, right, but also carries a note of deep sorrow. I think we can actually trust this one. Sounds like sounds like an insane person. I think we can trust that he is insane. 
We are on an insane Great. quest. I do believe we should probably all come together. If something is about to happen, we might want to be closer together. Shouldn't you Should we maybe teach me how to do this so I can do it in the future? I am trying to learn things. He takes the tube. He looks at you. I cannot teach what I am about to do. Why? When you reach the destination, you will have but one. It will already have the charge. You may use it to return. What do you... So, when, when I reach the destination or when we reach the destination? He holds them up and he reads the one. He says again... Sacrifice. He holds up the second one. I, Jacques Hack. The high blood of remembrance. Revenge is a better translation. See, he holds the two. He sighs. Places them both on his eyes. <laughs> he screams. You see, he falls to the ground, writhing. Smoke comes up from his eyes. And then suddenly, all of you feel yourself in a vortex. Um, it's like a, 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 a sense of disruption of your entire being. You feel light and wind uh, raises around you. And as you're thrown to the ground, everything goes black. <gasps> you wake up, you hear the lapping of waves. You look around, you see ocean, ocean all around you. Your sitting on a tiny island in the middle of a vast ocean. And we'll stop there for today. <laughs> All right, so. Is my follower wow. with me? <clears throat> What's that? Is my follower here or? Well, so we'll have to see what happens <laughs> next time. <laughs> Um, do you still have the head? That's all I want. I do. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're in a feast tonight. <laughs> all right, so. You should have stuck it in his eyes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And so we're going to do an Woo! MVP vote here in a second. Hey, thank you, Paro777. If you can, before Doesn't you go, be real quick, if you're not I mean, gone seriously. yet, give us a vote for your MVP. Just type the name of Clearly any player uh, that you think was the best player from the time you saw. We do an MVP at the end of each show. But thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. All right, so. Uh, we have, we won't do numbers today, but you've got the names up there. Uh, so you can you can hit uh, Edelis, Brual, Ant, Halgrim, Azamir, Marathaliel. Um, wow, who just did something with my links? It was me. me that's six. that, yeah, you I think six. so. It must be something. Oh, yeah, it's in the next door. Um, so hang on, let me go back to my regular lighting here. Just mage things. <laughs> um, so we have a vote for Azamir. A vote for Ant. Oh, yes, they bring that in here as well. Thank you so much Thank you. to our own Captain K. So we have a vote for Ant. We have a vote for Azamir. We have a vote for Azamir. Um, and Azamir was the winner last time. He's never had back-to-back -back wins. Uh, we did have some great role play from many, many players today. And then we have Another a... 20. We have a t-shirt giveaway today that is going and was no, won by our oh, own okay. C. Carson. Yeah. Hey. Uh, C. Carson here today gets his extra large blue box RPG. Give him a hand. Woo! Well, done, well done, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, if you're following, if you're watching today and you haven't followed us, if you're not subbing to this channel, we got one question for you. What are you doing? You saw some pretty cool stuff happening tonight. And hey, Shane O'Mac. If you want a shirt, I'll tell you what, send me your information and address, I'll get you out a shirt. You've been such a great supporter of the channel, I don't even need to raffle it for you. Hey, Max6TTDD, thank you so much 
for following us today or subbing to us. We appreciate that. And we're going to leave our stream MVP open for just another moment uh, while we're waiting to see if there are any other votes. I'll take a quick after stream chat session here. Anyone have any questions? Something didn't make sense? Um, you you want to know how something might have gone a different way or any questions at all? I, I'm going to bring something up. So like that encounter that happened with you, yeah, you could have done whatever you wanted. You had, if you had not run, Lem would have, or whatever that was, the, would have been there over that rock. Um, and I'm not saying you did the wrong thing, but I'm saying like, you're wondering like, is that on rails? Was was I meant to see him? And not? no, you would have had an encounter with him, but you, when you ran back, he took that opportunity to vanish. Um, other, like, any questions on anything that happened today? Mm. Remember, type in the chat if you have. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it. And yes, sir, we will. Yeah. <laughs> Lim is hanging out with Sully somewhere right now. Was there any way for us to get away from that army? Or was that. that yeah, well, yeah. That I, no, I mean, so, like, was it my intent that you be ferried here? Absolutely, it was my intent. Can something happen that changes that? And yeah, absolutely. Like, you. I was curious to see if you're going to try to do something. Like, right? so we were talking to him about breaking through. Or, I mean, that's all. As a DM, you let the players try. It might have worked. It might have gotten him killed. Um, <laughs> but clearly, yes, the intent of this was to, you know, this encounter was something you were seeking. This is what uh, Alatar had guided you toward. But whether or not you ever got here, or how you had gotten here, uh, could have varied greatly. Yeah. Uh, 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 fake chip. Oh. Goaded channel. Thank you very much for the goaded channel. Oh, yes, absolutely. Where's the fate chip I took from? Um, so, you know, double double 20s uh, with a 101 crit, depending on the situation, could be minor. But because this was sort of the boss of this thing on the first freaking swing, I mean, the first freaking swing, we're going to go major fate chip. Oh, hey, thank you for the host. Um, we appreciate it, even though we're almost done now. We'll take all the hosting we get. And hey, um, yeah, we I appreciate that so much. So we got a fate chip. Let me see, see the fate chip real quick. So these fate chips, these are not just any uh, nasty old fate chips. These are actually coins minted in the White Tower of London. Uh, I, well, I paid a buck and ran it through a machine, so it's not like this is all right. But, but still, it's cool. And this is the major fate chip. A major fate chip and blue box can be used um, you know, to reverse death circumstances, um, to change the outcome of a really fateful encounter. Uh, it is a very, very powerful item that is awarded either in moments of extraordinary role play or extraordinary combat feats, which again, uh, Azimir sort of under the lights or whatever it was that you said, um, you know, stepping up to the moment, um, he absolutely got that fate chip. All right, so we'll wait just another second for any other votes, and do we have questions on the screen today? I have to say, Marthaliel was warring between wisdom and <laughs> destroying the king because she was like thinking about flame striking him. Oh, I could tell. Yeah. yeah I don't think I was unaware yeah. of this. Like she was I, literally, literally, like, I don't know if you go back and watch the stream, but my chair was scooting this way the whole time, <laughs> scaring the crap out of me. Like, literally, I, I was like, if something doesn't happen, <laughs> um, good. Any other questions? Oh, another vote for Azamir. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Uh, then with what, what, is there any con set of conditions where my bluff would have worked? Yes. Oh, yes. Like, yeah. I mean, like, now when the outcome of that would have been as a DM, I would have had to think about that in the moment. But yes, like your bluff. Again, that's a great. If you if you toss out a 19 to high bonus, you roll a nat 20. That puts me in a spot where I have to figure out as a DM how I'm going to adjust to that. You know, that's not something I expected. But he, what it might have done is it might have created a parlay moment for that negotiation to occur without the combat. You know, so the combat was sort of the direction I thought it might go depending on how the challenge would occur. But yes, if you had succeeded with a bluff, then it might have resulted in a negotiation. And if he had rolled two 20s in a row, how likely was it that... I mean, if you would have hit me four times with a 27, I would have been unconscious, so... It was... So the way I built this encounter, sort of the CR, the hit points, the attack bonuses of the creature, it was tilted in... Um, and you never even got to know his name. <laughs> Stor... Storgajol. He was tilted in Storgajol's favor. He was... He was more powerful overall than Azimir. 
uh, but depending on skills, abilities, roles, it was fairly, you know, it was a good combat. It was designed to be a fair, sort of even, maybe tilted towards sword gradual combat. All right, any other questions? Well, that's the first uh, double 20 with the 100 that I've done since we started playing like 10 years ago. So that's <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is what I've been you, training you for. You picked the way. right time. <laughs> Yeah, it is, Shane. Thank you. Yeah, I think the question time is good. It is a, a great way to connect with the players. And also, you, know, you have to be careful because you don't want to create metagaming. Um, but I like you know, players knowing kind of what I'm thinking as a DM or ways that things might have gone differently in the, sh in the session. Um, so I think it's fun. We've been doing this the last couple times. All right, so we're oh, going to close. I have a question. question. Yes. What were the real roles of the arrows shot after at the bird. I'm wondering I, and I don't care about the numbers actually. Yes. I'm really wondering, did you, you know, as a DM decide, okay, that bird's not getting away. Yeah, no, you know good I mean? question. Like, actually, so I rolled three times. Um I don't remember all the roll I don't remember the middle roll. The bottom roll was a one. Um and I thought about actually role playing like you see an orc, you know, like the arrow actually rebounds into his own eye socket. But <laughs> I just felt like it would be distracting in that moment to role play the fumble of yeah. the one because it was irrelevant with all this horde here. And then I don't remember the middle one and the top one was an eighteen. Um and with the bonus that I had for them on a mi on a missile weapon it was a plus ten. So they had a twenty eight. I figured that would be good enough right as the bird is launching to hit. Uh, but it wasn't a crit, and Rock is a tough bird, so okay. he still got away. Um, Supplementary but, question, yeah. that, because 17 on initiative is, you know, that's a pretty decent roll. Or, or did, did they roll higher on initiative? Yeah, which which combat are you talking about? Because I keep all my initiative. No, rolls. Rock, when you roll Oh, initiative. Rock, because yes. Rock no, 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 Rock, Rock had it. That's why only three arrows got loose. Like, there's a whole army here around. So right. what I said was, if you lost initiative, there would have been you know, a full <laughs> of arrows. But he was so quick, I rolled a d6 to see, okay, how many archers could still get a shot off before he's completely out of distance? You know, he's not flash. He's right. still. So I rolled a d6, I hit three, I rolled a three. Uh, only one of them actually hit. I think the damage was a seven, if I remember right. So it was enough like to wound Rock, right. and that's why you saw him, but it was not enough to kill him, so he still got away, but he was hurt. Gotcha. All right, so I think we have no other questions, and we're going to close it off now. And the winner today, second time in a row, two-time MVP, Woo! Azamir! Hey! 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 Thank you so much for the follows, uh, for the subs, for the bits. Great, great time. We appreciate all of our fans. Everybody.